to more about the Panthers and Cowboys. I've been waiting all day for this. Just about a perfect autumn evening in Charlotte, North Carolina. Temperature in the mid-50s. Full House, Bank of America Stadium. As they greet their Carolina Panthers coming out onto the field to meet Coach Bill Parcells and his Dallas Cowboys on NBC's Sunday Night Football. Al Michaels along with John Madden, Andrea Kramer. Welcome to Charlotte. Big game for both teams. The season approaching the halfway mark and the loser of tonight's game will have four losses and that's a lot at the end of October as they head down the road toward the playoffs. Now as far as Carolina is concerned they began the season with two straight losses then one four in a row lost a heartbreaker to Cincinnati last week they're four and three and trailing New Orleans and Atlanta in their division. The Dallas Cowboys meanwhile three and three a humiliating defeat on Monday night to the New York Giants and of course the huge story the big story all week long quarterback and quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys is one of the regal positions in all of American sport John they make the change it's more than changing Drew Bledsoe for Tony Romo it's more than changing the experience of Bledsoe and exchanging it for Romo's mobility how do you see the bigger picture here well I think the bigger picture when Bill Parcells did that he had to think that this is a permanent thing he's not going to try it for a while and go back to Drew Bledsoe he is putting this team in Tony Romo's hands but you know I watched the film of last week's game and if if Tony Romo is going to have a chance everyone else is going to have to play better too. I mean the offensive line didn't block well the receivers didn't get open and if they're going to win tonight Tony Romo is going to need a lot of help from his teammates and they're going up against a very good defense the Carolina Panthers big game of course for Carolina tonight as they try to go to five and three. So what do they do about the Dallas quarterback change and what gives them the best chance to win tonight's game. Yeah, I talked to them during the week and watch them practice and they said that they're just practicing and getting ready to play the Dallas Cowboys and not the quarterback but knowing them if you look at the Panther defense the strength of that team is their defensive line and they put on a big pass rush so I think that's two things one they're going to go after Tony Romo big time and two they're going to disguise all their defenses not play what he thinks they're playing another thing we'll see tonight some great receivers some premium receivers on one side Terrell Owens on the other side Keyshawn Johnson, Dallas, Carolina on Sunday Night Football. NBC Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina. The Carolina Panthers came into the NFL as an expansion franchise in 1995 and got to the NFC Championship game the next year. Played in the Super Bowl three seasons ago. Thanks in good measure to that man, Jake DeLome. 
who had been in New Orleans, didn't play there, came here, and now he's a pro bowler. Let's go to Andrea Kramer. Well, I walked off the field with Tony Romo after the pregame warm-ups. I said, what's going through your mind? He said, a lot of excitement. I'm just anxious to get going. I said, what are you going to do in the last few minutes before you come out? He said, I'm just going to pretend like it's practice, go through my reads, and just make my final adjustments. Met with him yesterday. I think Bill Parcell summed him up perfectly. He said, confident, but not cocky. A very engaging guy, and he'll get a few extra minutes to think about it because Carolina is going to start with the ball. Mike Vanderjat, the ex Colt, to kick off. Richard Marshall to run it back for the Panthers. Marshall is a rookie from Fresno State. John Fox now in his fifth season, formerly the defensive coordinator for the New York Giants. Bill Parcells, his fourth season at Dallas, and here we go from Charlotte, North Carolina. Richard Marshall from the seven yard line brings it back up to the 32 yard line and that is where DeLome and the gang will go to work let's meet the Carolina offense Jake DeLome Louisiana Lafayette Deshaun Foster Tuscan High School Brad Hoover Western Carolina Steve Smith Utah Keyshawn Johnson University of Southern California Chris Mangum Mississippi Jordan Gross Utah Mike Wall Rim High School Jeff Handgardner Texas A&M Evan Mathis the University of Alabama Jeremy Bridges the University of Southern Mississippi Deshaun Foster they're running back plays on all three downs unlike Julius Jones who's the first and second down back and Marion Barber the third down back for Dallas and on play action the first play of the game is a pass but it's out of bounds Keyshawn Johnson stretching for it covered by Anthony Henry so they go right to Keyshawn in his first year with Carolina but it's incomplete you're right it's interesting the Panthers came out with three wide receivers went in motion and he left Keyshawn over all by himself over on this side it was one of those isolate things get him out there one on one on that side and the ball was just thrown a little too wide Johnson and Smith a great one two punch Smith with 39 receptions coming in Keyshawn with 36 now it's Foster who played his college football at UCLA stopped at the line of scrimmage let's take a look at the Dallas D Marcus Spears, Louisiana State. Jason Ferguson, Georgia. Chris Canty, Virginia. Greg Ellis, the University of North Carolina. Brady James, LSU. Aiken Adele, Purdue. Demarcus Ware, Troy. Terrence Newman, Kansas State. Keith Davis, Sam Houston State. Roy Williams, Oklahoma. Anthony Henry, South Florida. Third down and nine now, and the Panthers are last in the league in converting on third down this season. Third and long here, and DeLome is under pressure and has to throw it away. So it's been a season-long problem for the Panthers, and one of the things that happens when you don't convert on third down, your punter sees a lot of action. Yeah, that's what John Fox was saying the other day. He said their problem is turnovers. Ours is third down conversions. And, of course, when you when you don't gain anything on first down, you know, when you go incomplete pass, and then you come back with a run on second down, you have to gain something on that or you're going to be third and long. And third and long in this league is very tough to convert. Jason Baker to do the punting. Terrence Newman, Cowboy cornerback and punt returner, fields at the 15-yard line. And the former Kansas State Wildcat brings it back to the 25. So here comes Tony Romo, and here is the Dallas offense. Tony Romo. Eastern Illinois. Julius Jones, Notre Dame. Terrell Owens, Tennessee Chattanooga. Terry Glenn, The Ohio State University. Jason Witten, Tennessee. Anthony Fasano, Notre Dame. Flozell Adams, Michigan State. Kyle Kozar, Arizona State. Andre Girard, Colorado. Marco Rivera, Penn State. Mark Colombo, Boston College. Now let's see how that offensive line plays tonight, whether they can protect Romo, whether they can open up holes for the running game. Romo, four years with the Cowboys, but his first start out of Eastern Illinois, and he begins from the 25-yard line after he played the entire second half last week against the Giants. They go right to the air, and so far so good as he goes right to Owens, who breaks a tackle and then gets forced out of bounds after a gain of about eight. Broke out of a Ken Lucas tackle and steps out of bounds. It'll be second down and two. You know, one thing Bill Parcell said last night, he only really said one thing about, you know, physically about Romo. He says he has a quick release. He said he gets the ball out of there and I think 
you know, he'd been living with Drew Bledsoe for so long that would hold the ball a little too long and let the pressure get there. Tony Romo is just the opposite. He's going to get back there. That back foot hits. The ball's coming out. Second down and three. Romo slides to his right. And that pass is caught by Anthony Fasano. And that will be a first down. You also have a flag on the play. The first of the game. Scott Green is tonight's referee. Didn't you kind of feel that the Cowboys have come out Shot running? Block. Offense. Number 65 and number 21. 15 yard penalty. Second down. Andre Girard and Julia Jones. You would have thought, but you know, when, when Parcells put him in last week in the Giants game, John, as everybody knows now, he went right to the air. His first play is a pass interception. Right. It was a bootleg, and, you know, he wanted him to, you know, show that they were going to move and, and move the pocket. And I think this time is, is you just want the guy to, you know, get in the flow of the game, get a little rhythm, get a feel of everything. He got off to a pretty good start, and this penalty here kills him. So instead of a first down, it is second down and 18 from the 17-yard line. Against the four-man line and a four-man rush, and Romo throws to the outside, and he goes right back to the tight end, Jason Witten, tackled by Mike Minter. Here is the Carolina defense. Julius Peppers. Monkey Kimayatu, Utah. Chris Jenkins, Maryland. Mike Rucker, Nebraska. Thomas Davis, Georgia. Chris Draft, Stanford. Niall Diggs, V, Ohio State University. Chris Gamble, D, Ohio State University. Mike Minter, Nebraska. Sean Williams, UCLA. Ken Lucas, Ole Miss. For whatever reason, Julius Peppers, I'm not telling you, he played his college football at North Carolina. Number two overall pick in the draft. And this is where he is tough on this down in this situation. Third and ten, and Romo cannot get rid of it. Tony Romo sliding to his right, and again, he gives you that mobility. But in the case of playing against this Carolina defense with Jenkins and Rucker and Peppers up front, very often no place to run. Do you see what Peppers did on that play, Al? It was, it was he that made the play. He felt the bat coming off, and he just drops with him. Here he comes. He starts up. He feels Marion Barber. He goes in with him and takes it away. And that's why Tony Romo had to hold the ball. And then Chris Jenkins got there. Here is Matt McBriar, who is averaging better than 50 yards a kick. He has a chance to break one of the longest standing records in NFL history. Sammy Ball holding the mark at 51 and change. This kick taken at the 30-yard line. And Chris Gamble will run it back to the 37. So a 51 yard kick for the Aussie Matt McBriar. Panthers will have it for the second time when we come back to Charlotte. Ding. You are now free to dip your toes in the ocean. Ding. Ding. You are now free to see an old friend. Airlines proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of Super Bowl 41 by Subway Restaurant Subway. Eat fresh by Chevrolet, America's brand, Chevy and American Revolution, and by Budweiser Select, brewed longer for a bold taste that finishes clean. Expect everything. Queen City of the South, as it's known, Charlotte, North Carolina. Here we go. Second possession for the Panthers. No score. Early in the first quarter from the 36-yard line, this drive begins with Foster running through the middle, and most of the Panthers running this season has been between the tackles, and nothing happening there because you got Aiken Adele, the former Jaguar, and a very, very tough defense. And, John, you were talking about Dallas coming into this season as maybe having the best defense in the league. You know, I thought so in preseason. I was watching them, and, you know, they had all that T.O. stuff, and I thought, you know, quietly, Bill Parcells is, is building a heck of a defense here, and, and I like their outside guys. I mean, DeMarcus Ware, who plays out here on the right side, is something special. Greg Ellis, you know, a big linebacker on the outside. You have those two guys on the outside that makes this defense tough. On second and ten, that pass is incomplete. For the first time, they go to Steve Smith. And he will see a lot of Terrence Newman tonight in what will be a great matchup. Yeah, Terrence Newman is going to go wherever Steve Smith goes. Now, that doesn't mean that he'll always be man-to-man. -man. I mean, sometimes he's going to have help deep. He's going to have the safety over the top. He's going to have a linebacker coming out there because Terrence Newman is a good corner, but I'll say this. No one can cover Steve Smith man-to-man -man by himself without help. Talked about the problems that Carolina's had on third down. There it is when your quarterback is averaging 33 
a 33 rating on third down, you're not going to convert very often. Here it's third down and 10. He's under pressure. He throws off his back foot, and the pass is underthrown and incomplete. Terrence Newman is there covering. So you had Smith going to the other side, and Newman staying with him, and it's fourth down. You know what the Cowboys did, they pressured him on that one, but, you know, you're, you're going to see the pressure coming from the, the right side up there. Roy Williams, the safety, gets up there and comes, but they still have, have the, the receiver double deep. And that's what you have to do with Steve Smith. Even though you're going to blitz, you can't leave him man-to-man. -man. Baker to punt, and this time Creighton, and not Newman, is back to return the kick. That's a boomer into the night sky that backs Creighton up to the 13. And Creighton, one of the Dallas wide receivers, brings it back to the 18-yard line. Tackled there by Brad Hoover. Romo and company back to work. 10.57 to go. Opening period. Nothing, nothing. He's a two-time NFL MVP. He's a two-time Super Bowl MVP. They meet next week on Sunday Night Football. And if you didn't hear about it, take a look at those numbers. Peyton Manning, three touchdowns, 32 of 39 against a Denver defense that had allowed only two touchdowns in six games. Indy goes into next week's game undefeated, beats Denver 34-31. Now Dallas <laughs> and Romo's able to back off. You almost had the fullback moving, but Oliver Hoyt gets reset. Then they give the ball to Julius Jones, and Julius Jones takes it out to the 31. Julius had a huge day last year against Carolina, and his first run of tonight's game is out to the 31-yard line for a gain of 13. And Oliver Hoyt makes a pretty good block. The guy that missed the... The fullback, you don't see a lot of that anymore, that fullback in there, but watch, Flozell Adams there, he takes his guy out, Hoyt makes a good lead block in there, and Julius Jones gets right in behind him. Hoyt is a converted linebacker who led the way there. The ball is at the 31. Jones again, stopped behind the line of scrimmage. You want to know how cool Tony Romo is? I mean, here's a guy, he's going to get the start. He's the Dallas Cowboy quarterback. So they go to him last week, and, you know, they're trying to create some controversy, the media. And they say, well, who's your favorite receiver? As if it's, it's either got to be Owens or somebody else. Without blinking, he says, Oliver Hoyt. And nobody had any idea who he was talking about. But Hoyt is the fullback who, of course, never gets into the offense except the block. Yeah, and I think with, with this group, when you had Terry Glenn on one side, Terrell Owens on the other side, that was probably close to the right answer, wasn't it? Perfect. And hysterical. Second and 12. And Romo's going to take off and gets out to the 34 yard line. Mike Minter will get credit for a tackle there at the 34. You know, and this is the this is the thing that Tony Romo could do that Drew Bledsoe couldn't do is 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 is, is he can be active in that puck. You see here, here he goes from shotgun, goes a little play action pass, doesn't have anything there, but it's not a loss. It's not a sack, it's not an interception, it's not a fumble. I mean he only picked up three or four yards, but it still puts him in a third and manageable position. Spent time with Romo last night. Great sense of humor. And as Parcel said, confident but not cocky, and you could you could just feel it. Third down and seven, rolling. Going to run again. He's going to pick up the first down. Knew exactly where he had to go, and then goes down at the 43-yard line. And again, you talk about the mobility, and it's a lot more than the experience of Bledsoe for the mobility of Romo. But that's the type of thing he can do for you. You know, and you talk about the Panthers, you know, not having success on third down. If you're going to have success on third down, about three or four times a game, your quarterback has to run and get you a first down. See, Julius Peppers went to the other side that time. He usually plays on the left defensive side. That time he was on the right defensive side. I think Tony Rowe felt he wasn't there. I'm going to go to that side now. He gets nine on the third and seven. Quickly to Owens, and Owens gets by Gamble into Carolina territory and finally run out of bounds by Minter at the 33-yard line. So Terrell Owens makes the catch, and as he's done for years now, 11 of them, in fact, a lot of yardage after the catch. You know, and that's that's the thing with Terrell Owens. I mean, a lot of people think you're as a big play guy throwing the ball deep. All you have to do is get the ball in his hands 
because he's a playmaker. These are the types of things that he can do to run after the catch. I mean, he's a big guy. It doesn't have to be a deep pass. He can make a big play out of a short pass. Caught that at the line of scrimmage and turned it into a 25-yard gain. He's caught two tonight, halfway through the period. A little toss back to Jones, who's going to try to cut it back. And Jones takes it to the 30-yard line for a gain of two. So Romo takes over, and of course for the Cowboys, Troy Aikman went into the Hall of Fame this year, but since Aikman retired in 2000, you go back to the 2001 season. Carter, Bledsoe, Testaverde, Hutchinson, Ryan Leaf, Wright, Sterner, Henson, and now Romo. That's nine starting quarterbacks since number eight hung it up, and doesn't Jerry Jones know that all too well? Yeah, because Jerry Jones knows that since Troy Aikman, if you have nine, that meant you had none. <laughs> I mean, you didn't have the one guy. I mean, when Troy was there, he was a guy, and after he left, you never got the guy again. Second down and eight. Romo. And that pass is out of bounds. Owens was covered well, and Ken Lucas wants a flag for offensive interference on Owens. He won't get that, but it's incomplete, and it's third down and eight. Owens probably did push Lucas or something because you wonder what Terrell Owens was doing that close to the sideline anyway you see when he takes the outside release here he doesn't give Romo anything to throw to I mean, he just runs out of bounds I mean, he didn't do anything to Lucas but that was a poor pattern by Terrell Owens I mean, he's a better player than that he knows that you can't be the outside guy and be forced out of bounds first incompletion Romo was three of his first four and he has two runs it's third down and eight and the play clock was ticking all the way down, so Romo is going to take a timeout. Timeout, third and eight upcoming from the 30 yard line in Charlotte. No score. It's the biggest hit of the new television season. The name of the show is Heroes, and you can see it tomorrow night, Monday night, right here on NBC at 9 Eastern and Pacific, 8 o'clock Central, and Mount Heroes. On NBC. Timeout was taken by Romo and the Cowboys. The ball is at the 30 yard line. It is third down and eight for the Dallas Cowboys. Scoreless first quarter. Out of the shotgun. Owens and Creighton stacked as receivers to the right. Romo looked that way, then to the left, and that pass is not caught by Terry Glenn. He went to the ground, but he couldn't get possession of it covered well by Lucas and now the Cowboys will attempt to take the lead on a field goal that will have to travel roughly 48 yards. You know it's impressed me so far about the Cowboys as their pass protection. I I thought that their offensive line against the Giants were really weak. They were manhandled by the Giant defense and so far in this game they've been pretty stout against this Panther defense. Mike Vanderjack came over from the Colts. Romo is the holder. And Vanderjack's kick hits the upright. It looked like it was starting to hook back in or draw back in, but it never got there. So a miss from 48, and the Panthers take over when we come back. Football is being brought to you by Chevrolet, America's brand, a Chevy. An American Revolution. So Carolina takes over 38 yard line where the ball was spotted for the missed kick by Vanderjack. First down. Jake DeLome, the quarterback from the 38. DeLome, slant, winds up hitting Steve Smith for a gain of eight. Covered there by Terrence Newman. Again, a look at Vanderjack. It started the draw, but hits the upright. Now that's the sound you don't want to hear if you're a kicker. You don't want to hear that second thump. <laughs> he thinks it's good. He can't believe it. No, you don't want to hear, as John has, has said for years, the doink. No, nope, you don't want the doink. You want the thump and then no more sound. <laughs> Gain of 11 on the play. The ball at the 49 on first down. They give it to Foster. And Deshaun Foster will pick up three across the 50 to the Dallas 48 yard line second down and seven Foster is he's their ace back they picked D'Angelo Williams they got him as a rookie in the draft but he's been hurt so Foster has been the guy and he's averaging as you can see a little under the league average which normally is 4.0 year after year he's a 3 8 
You know, and I think, you know, that can go to the third down. You know, you say that the Panthers have been, haven't been successful on third downs, but they haven't been successful on first and second a lot of the time either, and they leave themselves in third and long. On second down and six now. The long will throw. That is caught near side, and that is Michael Gaines fighting it for the extra yardage before he's finally taken down by Ware. So Michael Gaines in his third year out of Central Florida, seventh round pick. Back in 04 makes his first catch and the ball to the 37 yard line. Well you see Greg Ellis there is on the tight end Mike Gaines. He's the outside linebacker and he's just playing them man to man. Now what they did is they put their fullback they put Brad Hoover to the outside. So what that did is that left Greg Ellis the the strong side linebacker man to man on Michael Gaines. Gaines is 6 3 280. So lineman size, tough to bring down, ball at the 37. DeLome buying a ton of time with the fake, then has to throw underneath, and it's Foster who makes the catch and is ridden out of bounds just short of the first down by Brady James. You know, John, I'm looking at Jake DeLome and I'm thinking about Tony Romo in the sense that DeLome is another of those guys who sat on the bench, who carried a clipboard, who didn't get to play in New Orleans, then he gets traded, and he finally get the, uh, got the opportunity, and clearly he's made the most of it. Yeah, and, and I think that's what Bill Parcells and the Cowboys are hoping is going to happen to Tony Romo, that you know they sit, they wait, they're undrafted, they're a free agent, and then they come on big. And maybe the, the poster boy for all that could be Kurt Warner. Yeah, Warner's a perfect example. <laughs> Jeff Hostetler was like that. That's enough for a first down. Trent Green was another guy who was around for a long time before he finally got his opportunity. Right, and when you when you have that situation, that's always what you're hoping for. I mean, you're hoping to get you know the Jake DeLome. and uh, you know, and you forget what a good quarterback he is. You know, and just remember, just a few Super Bowls ago against the Patriots, I thought that if Jake DeLome would have gotten the ball again, the Panthers would have won that game. I thought the last team that had the ball was going to win that Super Bowl. And it turned out to be the Patriots. Now DeLome's going to throw for Johnson, and Johnson will draw the penalty. That was Anthony Henry who was beaten on the play, and the only way he could stop him was illegally. Yeah, it looked like Anthony Henry knew that. I mean, that was that was one of the matchups. You know, we talked about how Terrence Newman is going to play against Steve Smith. Defense, number 42. Ball will be spotted at the spot of the foul. First and goal. So that means that Anthony Henry is going to play the other side against Keyshawn Johnson. And Keyshawn gives him a double move. He's going to give him an out move there. And it looks like he looked like he thought he was going to the outside. He expected him to run a short pattern. He took a peek to the outside. Keyshawn goes by him. And the only thing he could do is grab him. 20 yard penalty. The ball is at the seven. It's first down and goal. The fake to Foster. Then the pass to Foster which he makes off his shoe tops and he's out of bounds Demarcus Ware thrusts him out of bounds at about the two yard line it'll be second down and goal. Yeah Brad Hoover the 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 fullback I circle he lined up wide now what they do is they want to see what what the defense is so they put a fullback out here now if a defensive back stays on him that means it's going to be zone if a linebacker comes out and plays on him then that means it's going to be man to man now they just put him out there just to check the coverage it doesn't mean they're going to throw it to that guy that's going to tell him what the coverage is they spotted him out of bounds inside the one second down and goal and they give it to Foster and Foster tries to bull his way in touchdown. Only needed about 30 inches and he got him. Well, I think he got about 10 initially and then he got <laughs> to 20 on the second effort. Deshaun made that big play in the pass interference. You're going to see Hoover lead right through. Now, right there, he doesn't have anything yet, but on that second effort right there was when he got those last 20 inches. You know, for a primary running back, he doesn't visit the end zone that much. He's carried the ball now 509 times in his career. That's only a six touchdown. And John Casey, who was one of the original Panthers when they came into the league in 95 for the extra point. So a 62 yard march after the missed Vanderjack field goal, 7 0 Panthers. The Panthers could not move the ball on their first two series, but on that series, one of the differences, 
Jake DeLome who was 0 for 4 on the first two series was 4 for 4 here. And also they didn't have a third down. They didn't have to convert any third downs. They went down with alacrity. Casey to kick off. 7 0 Carolina. Ball field at five yard line. Tyson Thompson. Native of Irving, Texas, home of the Cowboys. And Tyson Thompson is out of bounds at the 35, and we'll go to Andrea Kramer. Andrea. Well, Al, every week, Panthers head coach John Fox picks a player to address the team on Saturday afternoon. Well, yesterday, it was Keyshawn Johnson's turn. Johnson said of his former team, the Cowboys, the circus is coming to town, so get ready. They've got lots of acts going on, but this is our opportunity to burst onto the scene nationally and show people we're for real. Johnson said, this game is for our season, and he was looking ahead to next week's bye. He said, hey, you want to be 4-4 four and four with your head between your legs or 5-3 and three and walk around town with your chest out? And there's a big difference because right now they're in third place in a tough division trailing New Orleans which lost today in Atlanta which won today at Cincinnati and Romo throws and Witt makes the catch and there's a flag down so for the moment of first down you know I'm thinking John as a coach and you can relate to this you tell a guy each week I'm going to pick a guy to make a speech holding, holding. offense number 65 10 yard penalty first down Andre Girard the center some guys would be so nervous that it might affect their preparation for the game if they knew they had to get up and make a speech the next day. Well, Jake DeLone was one of those guys. He said that. He said, you know, when, you know, before he announces who's going to make the speech, he said, I'm more nervous about that than I am about the team that we're playing against. So maybe, maybe John Fox ought to rethink that a little. I certainly not asked DeLone to do it. Almost had a couple tough breaks here where he's made some. Pretty good plays, got first down, only to be brought back by a penalty. At the 24 yard line, first down and 20. Gonna draw with Jones and Julius Jones. Finds it difficult to get some room here. Gain of a yard, maybe two. Chris Draft makes the tackle. Second down, let's call it uh, 19. You want to see a guy that is a real force in the middle. In fact, any place that he goes, he's a real force, and that's Chris, Chris Jenkins. He is one of the biggest guys that I have ever seen. I mean, they have him listed like 330 pounds. I saw him in practice the other day. I know that he goes over 350. But remember a couple of years ago, he was, he was a top player. He was a Pro Bowl player, and he missed the last two years due to injury. But, but when he gets healthy, he's really something, especially along that defensive front. Second down and 19. Romo throws wide open is Owens at the 31 yard line but covering quickly closing quickly was Ken Lucas who now reaches down for his uh, groin and as he comes up slowly Lucas was shaken up in Cincinnati last week I think it was a hip injury that he incurred and uh, John Fox described it as just a, a penalty for the or a, an injury for the day practice this week but you can tell he's hurting again here. Yeah because they took him out last week and the, the Ricky uh, Richard Marshall played his position. After it, hits like that you always have to check all your parts and yeah. looks like he checked them and they're all OK so he's going. Well they've got Glenn on him right now but Romo is not looking that way yet and then has it tipped and Gable can he get control of it before he steps out of bounds the head linesman is there to say yes the interception Owens is going to plead the case and this smacks of course of a challenge that would be impending as Romo comes over to the bench and says he never had possession Gamble comes up does he when does he have possession not yet no, not he yet doesn't. there yeah. and if they want to challenge they're going to win it. I think they have to challenge. I mean, there's there's no there's no doubt. I mean, in this position, they just they just scored a touchdown. You can't let them have this field position again, especially when you look at the replay and see that he didn't have uh, a possession of the ball before he went out of bounds. Interception. A lot of tip balls, though, wasn't it? <laughs> About six times. Challenged by Parcells. Back in a moment. Well, when we first looked at this, it, it looked like he didn't have possession and stayed in bounds. But let's go back here and take this is very close. He's juggling it. He'll keep juggling it till he almost gets to the sideline. And then Gamble will get possession. 
in just a second here. Right. Well, there he has his left foot down clearly. After reviewing the play, here comes the ruling answer. on the field stands. Oh. Dallas is charged the second timeout. So what they're saying is he had possession with the left foot down, and there is the right foot. Is it on the chalk or is it not? I mean, it's almost impossible to tell from that angle. So what Scott Green saw is basically the same thing we saw, and he didn't see enough to overturn the call on the field. You know, when you looked at that thing live, though, it, it really looked like he was out of bounds and didn't have control of it. Then when you, you break it down and you, you slow it down and then you stop it, you can see that you know, likely he did have both feet in. So now from the 24, they run Smith on an end around, and he'll get inside the 10 and go all the way to the end zone for the touchdown. So Parcells has seen the missed field goal, a shortened field. Carolina moved 62 yards with dispatch, a penalty to make it first and 20 after what would have been a first down, an interception and a challenge that he loses, and then Smith on the next play takes it into the end zone. And that's what Steve Smith gives you with that great speed. It's not always just running straight up the field and catching deep passes, but it's catching short runs and then go deep or running reverses like that. Second rushing touchdown of Smith's career, and Casey for the point after. So they take advantage of the turnover on one play, running Smith on the end around with 121 to go in the period. That's the center right here, Jeff Hangardner. He gets he gets down there and he's going to get a block right there, and that's the one that springs Steve Smith. Well, it was Steve Smith's speed and that Cowboy defense kind of look like they're catching them. It doesn't look like there's a lot of anxious tacklers around here. Meanwhile, Keyshawn Johnson takes Roy Williams out of the play, just shields him. You know, that's that's one of the big additions of a Keyshawn Johnson. I mean, that's one of the things he gives you. You know about the receiver, you know about all those things, but he's a very good blocker, and he knows on that play, on that reverse, who's the most dangerous guy on the Dallas Cowboy defense? It would be Roy Williams. If someone's going to make the tackle on that play, once he got around the end, it would be Roy Williams. And that's the guy Keyshawn Johnson went after. Now the Cowboys with a new quarterback with a huge game coming off that Giants loss and watching the Giants now spread some daylight in that division. Giants winning again today against Tampa and down by 14 on the road. And it's the first of three straight road games for the Cowboys. From the one yard line, Tyson Thompson. And Thompson will give them some decent field position up at close to the 40 yard line. And even better now because Carl Hankton is there out of bounds, and the flag comes in. Yeah, I think somewhere around here, Bill Parcells has to get mad, don't you? You, you, you watched him on, on Monday night, and he, you know, and he, he just didn't look like he had any life to him. I mean, he didn't look like the old Bill Parcells who was, you know, getting in guys' faces, getting on Personal guys, foul. firing guys up. Unnecessary roughness. Number 88, out of bounds hit, 15 yard penalty, first down. I mean, he looked the other night, last Monday, I mean, it was like a combination of disconsolate aggravated frustrated yeah and that's not the Bill Parcells that we've that we've known over the years I mean I think I, I think you have to get a little fire in you and I think he's trying to he said last week after Monday night's game he got 10 calls from ex players and coaches and guys that he's been with saying hey you're not you anymore get back to who you are I think the best word to describe the way he looked last week was exasperated. Here's Jones. And Jones will pick up a first down to the 36 yard line. And, and people close to, to Parcells have, have talked to him. And, you know, it's funny. Bill last night, he does not pass the buck. He said to us last night, he said, I'm upset with myself over where we are. He said, This game, football, tells you who you are. He said last week's game told me, Parcells, you're bad. Yeah, and, and he was bad, and they were bad. I mean, 
I watched a film of that game, and the, and the Giants not only beat them, they whipped them and manhandled them. Jones gets taken down on the first down play. Julius Peppers right there for the tackle. I think sometimes, you know, that whole Drew Bledsoe and Tony Romo thing kind of camouflages some stuff and disguises it when maybe maybe it wasn't all about just Drew Bledsoe. Maybe the, the line didn't block. In fact, not maybe. I know they didn't block. I watched them. The receivers didn't work. They didn't get open. They, you know, they didn't get the running game going. So you can't put a quarterback out there all by himself and expect him to do it. You know, Strahan and Arrington, each with a sack in the first quarter, totally unblocked. It's the end of the first quarter in Charlotte with a score. The Carolina Panthers 14, the Dallas Cowboys nothing. And Sunday Night Football resumes after these messages. Looks right, shoots it out, caught. Michael Vick has thrown his third score of the day. So Chicago unbeaten, Indy unbeaten as the calendar gets ready to flip over into November. And we flip to the second quarter. Al Michaels, John Madden, Andrea Kramer in Charlotte. Cowboys on second and ten. Romo thrown to the outside. Lynn goes up for the catch and is able to haul it in. Makes the catch and is forced out of bounds by Gamble. So the completion and Romo here on a very important drive down 14 to nothing trying to get him back into it. 12 yard gain. You know you look at this throw and that's the toughest throw you have to make it is is from the far hash mark to the out. Everyone thinks you know it's a deep pass and or, or it's an up or a post or a corner but it's being on the far hash mark throwing the ball all the way across the field with velocity on the out. That's, that's the toughest throw you have to make. Here's Jones. Big hole for him, but it closes quickly. Ken Lucas, we saw him shaken up, and he came out of the game last week in Cincinnati. He's back in the locker room. So on the other side at cornerback, they've got a rookie, Richard Marshall, number 31. Now the question is, can Romo and the Dallas offense exploit that? Yeah, I would I would sure try. But but having said that, Richard Marshall's a pretty good player. I mean, I mean, this guy's not a stiff out there. Eh? I watched him and he has good quickness and, and, and he has a good feel for the game and and they're not going to leave him. He's on Terry Glenn now. He won't be by himself. They're going to give him help somewhere. Second round draft choice from Fresno State. And this time it's Glenn and Marshall is playing him a little soft as Glenn gets taken down at the 13 yard line. And I think anytime you see a corner go out and then you know that backup come in you go to work on him. Then when that backup is a rookie you know you want to test him out and that's exactly what they did. You saw Richard Marshall was out there and Terry Glenn played off a little and Tony Romo just got him the ball quickly. First and 10 13 yard line Romo is six out of nine for 65 yards. He's also run twice for 14 he gives him that extra dimension with his mobility here they give it to Jones Jones over the left side for a gain of three behind an Oliver Hoyt block and it'll be second down and let's call it six the spot at the nine yard line you know the Cowboys are in what we call the the red zone the red area now inside the 20 and and Bill Parcells John Fox was saying that in this area he always likes to run the quarterback somewhere so he said that they, you know they said what's the difference between Bledsoe and Romo they always expect quarterback run inside the 20 with Tony Romo they expect it more. Second down make it seven they'll spot the ball at the 10 yard line. Romo throws over the middle hits Owens and Owens will pick up the first down. He gets wrestled down by Gamble. But the ball will be spotted at the three yard line and it will be first and goal for the Dallas Cowboys. You know, Tony Romo's had pretty good time here. I talked about the pass protection, but but you know one thing that they're going to help on Julius Peppers. And you see the guard and the tackle both take him because he's getting penetration. But I like Tony Romo here. I, I like yeah. the way he reads and then where he, he decides where he's going with the ball. Boom! It comes out of there quickly. On a three, first and goal. Romo for Owens, and that's knocked down. The ball floated and Richard Marshall is there to bust up the play. Yeah that's one thing he'll learn if you're going to throw that that fade you better throw it to that back pylon. Don't throw it between the pylon. 
You see here, they get Terrell Owens on Marshall. That's the matchup they want on the rookie, but you have to throw it deep. You have to throw it to the back of the end zone, not the front or middle of the end zone. And Owens is lucky he wasn't flagged for a face mask there. He had Marshall's face mask in his grasp on the way down. Second down and goal. You've got Glenn in the slot. Witten split to the left, and Owens at the top of the screen to the right. And this time, he goes to Witten for the touchdown. Threw it off his back shoulder. Minter with the coverage. You had the safety on the tight end. And a touchdown for Romo and the Cowboys. I tell you, and that was a quick throw. You talk about a quick throw and release and velocity. That ball went right by Mike Minter. I mean, Minter looked like he was in position. What? I mean, he steps and that thing comes out of there. There's Minter. He throws it right by his outside shoulder, right where the only guy that can catch that one is Jason Witten. I mean, he had him like inside and he led him to the outside where he had to turn and make that catch. Witten's first touchdown reception of the season, followed by a Vander Jatt extra point. Dallas halves the Carolina lead, 14-7. By GM, by GE, imagination. I can't blow that one. By GE, imagination at work. By Miller Lite, for a great taste, there's no debate. Miller Lite, always a good call. And by Sprint, be a better fan with NFL Mobile, only from Sprint. Power up. Of all things, went through I, the whole season, haven't mentioned Monday night, haven't no. mentioned the other network. <laughs> I always just walk around <laughs> saying GE myself. Right. <laughs> Dallas to kick off. Five yard line. Richard Marshall. Who we saw. And quarterback loses the ball. The ball is loose. The Cowboys still can't pick it up. And at the very end, in comes Gaines to recover it at the 11 yard line. The tight end. Oliver Hoyt created the fumble. Dallas had two or three opportunities to come up with the football. And then Gaines saves the day for Carolina. And Bill Parcells is still, is still way too calm. Although he wants to see it again and say, what the heck happened? I mean, Marshall is going to learn. You know, we talked about his being a rookie. You're going to learn to put that thing away to protect the ball. You can't leave it hanging out there. And then if you ever have a chance to jump, I mean, you just got to jump on it and just smother the thing. Juggled, 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 and finally Gaines got there. So Carolina backed up at its 11-yard line. Three minutes into the second quarter, 14 to 7, Carolina. Foster cuts it back, has some room, and gets banged down at the 17-yard line by the safety Keith Davis. Davis starting tonight in place of Patrick Watkins, the rookie out of Florida State, who'd started every game this season, but they got Marcus Coleman back. He had been suspended. Davis was the starter last year, so Watkins inactive tonight. Right, and I think it was just Watkins' inexperience that the the Cowboy defense was really playing pretty well, but they were giving up too many big plays, and they thought one of the reasons. And again, in any any position, you just can't blame one guy, but they thought that you know Patrick, Patrick Watkins had had quite a bit to do with some of the big pass plays against them. Second down and four, Foster. Up to the 20-yard line, it'll be third and short. So we'll see what Carolina can do on third and short here. Dan Henning is the offensive coordinator, longtime offensive coordinator, former head coach in the NFL, and a good pal of uh, Bill Parcells, among other people. Right, he's coached with Bill Parcells, coached against Bill Parcells, and you know Bill Parcells said he's one of his best friends. He said I only got about five of them, you know, and he said Dan Henning is one of them, and. One thing about Dan Henning, he moves guys around a lot. Like he started on that first down going three wide receivers. So, you know, spread you out. And then you think it's a pass. And then he runs and he mixes his ends up. I mean, he mixes his formations up all the time. Third down and one. And the pass out here in the flat. That's going to net a first down to Deshaun Foster. And he gets taken out of bounds by Brady James. But they convert for the first time tonight on a third down. I think Jake DeLome had been feeling that uh, uh, pressure, that third down conversion thing. And, uh, you know, and he said, you know, because you know, I asked him, I said, is there anything to it? I mean, anything that's constant? He said, no. He said, there's nothing. You look there, he almost fumbled the snap. But then, you know, he, he gets a fumble snap, gets it out of there, gets it out to his back, and gets a first down, and then can smile about it. 
Nick Goings is now in the backfield. Foster comes out. And they give it to Goings. He scored a touchdown on a pass reception last week at Cincinnati. He gets about two. Steve Smith. Last year, I mean, he did something that uh, sort of got under the radar, but it doesn't happen very often. Tied for the league lead in receptions, led the league in receiving yards, led the league in touchdown receptions. Hadn't happened since our man Sterling Sharp did it with the Packers in 92, and before that, Jerry Rice in 90, and that's the only time, the only three times it's happened since 1970, since the merger. Pressure, and down he goes in the arms of Greg Ellis. And Ellis tries to extract the ball, but the play is whistled dead. Carolina maintains possession, but Ellis is there for the tackle, a yard behind the line of scrimmage. You know, Greg Ellis, remember when he was a, a defensive end, and they made him an outside linebacker now, and, and he's been doing that this whole game. You know, is, is not only going for the tackle, but always trying to, trying to get the turnover, strip the ball. Here he is, the outside guy. He makes a play here. They flush him out, and then he, as, as he goes to the ground, he keeps trying to get that ball away from Jake DeLong. Even though, even though, even though DeLong was running for the moment, they, they do credit him with a sack. And DeLong now on third down and nine, and that is caught by Chris Mangum, the tight end, and that will be a first down up at the 45-yard line. So all of a sudden, back to back conversions here for Carolina and they move the ball on a drive that started at the 11 out toward the 46 yard line. Yeah, he had good protection here and watch the right side. Once you start a stunt like that and you get caught or blocked, that gives the quarterback a lot more time and it also gives him that side, the right side to throw the ball. You know, sometimes when you run a, a, a stunt or with a tackle in the end cross, you know, it's a good looking thing and the guy breaks loose. But if you stone him on the line like that, I'll tell you, that is an ugly looking pass rush. The long has completed his last six attempts. They've got Foster back in here. And he won't go very far. Taken down at the 48 yard line. Marcus Spears, the first guy to handle him. You know, if you just look at that Dallas defense, you see they're playing so much cover, too, where they have their safeties real deep. And that's all about Steve Smith. So when they have those. Safety's deep, then that means that they only have seven guys up in front. And what Dan Henning is trying to do is run the ball, throw the short passes to get him out of that cover two. Smith to the right side. You've got Newman. Newman only giving him about two yards bottom of the screen right there. That's the matchup. Most of the night. Second down and eight. The long of the spin hits Smith and then Smith drops it. Got inside Newman, but he couldn't hold on. Looking upfield before the ball went wound up in his hands. It'll be third down and eight. Yeah, we're talking about the mixture that the Panthers give. This was a three wide receivers, and you see Smith. He makes a, a little fake to the outside, and he runs a slant to the inside. The only thing he forgot. Five nine one eighty five is Steve Smith. As John Fox says, he's small but plays big. Uh, he plays he plays big and he plays strong. Fox also said what sets him apart competitive greatness. He always wants the ball. A lot of receivers do. Smith gets it here and Henry makes a nice tackle just holding on the 50 yard line. Every every receiver says he wants the ball but the coaches know the guys that really want the ball in crunch time. Yeah, and then and then sometimes if things are going well, you like them, and sometimes when things aren't going well, you tell them to shut up because mm -hmm. they're both the same guy. Right. I mean, remember, remember Jerry Rice, and one of the all-time greats, always wanted the ball. Terrell Owens, you know, always wants the ball. Steve Smith always wants the ball. Marvin Harrison, you don't know what he wants, but I imagine <laughs> he wants the ball, but he never says anything. He gets a few, and we'll see him next week. Indy at New England, Baker to punt. Well, it was Indy good today oh. Whew, against Denver. Come from behind, win against a Bronco team that allowed only two touchdowns all season. So Carolina started that last drive at the 11 after that fortunate recovery of a fumble, and now Dallas will start its drive from its own 12. Fun, you know, he's, he's an exciting player. They're talking about Tony Romo who led him on that drive. You mentioned at the top, neither. Positions in American sports center fielder New York Yankees center Boston Celtics quarterback 
Dallas Cowboys. And that's what he is right now. The ball is at the 12 yard line, first down. Romo to Fasano. A lot of that, of course, has to do with history. Talking to Romo last, last night. John, how about this week? Last Sunday, his, I said, you have a girlfriend? He said, well, I did until last week. She called me and she broke up with me on Sunday. Then on Monday night, he's the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. He, he just seems to take everything, though, with the flow. He says, with anything new, he said, I'm more aggressive than passive. But he was, as far as ascending to this position, non-plus, coming into tonight's game. Yeah, but you wonder, I mean, how can you be the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys and your girlfriend breaks up with you on the phone? From Florida. That's what I was wondering about. Second down and five. Here's Owens. Out of bounds. I mean, <laughs> you're looking. I mean, you're out there. You're a single guy. Hey, what do you do? I'm the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, all right. Yeah, but you know, the guys don't let him off the hook on that one. You know, it's 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 one of the things that it would say, oh, geez, I'm sorry, Tony. I'm sorry, your girlfriend. You know, they say, hey, don't worry. She'll call you. You know, and then. <laughs> He's looking at his phone. You know, did, did she call? Even last time we were talking, he was looking at his phone. Yeah. You know, she hasn't called me. Well, the guys, you know, anything like that, the pile is open, and you're going to pile on. And we really opened up that pile here by doing this tonight up to the 30-yard line. Jones for a gain of eight. Andrea, we, we need your advice here. Well, no, I can pile on a little bit more here because if you grew up in Burlington, Wisconsin, the way Tony Romo did, well, you had to idolize Brett Favre growing up. Well, Marco Rivera, the uh, the Panthers, guard, the uh, Cowboys guard, spent nine years in Green Bay with Favre. So the minute he got to Dallas last year, Romo just peppered him with questions about his idol. What kind of guy is he? What does he like to do? How does he act in the huddle? And Rivera said that Romo, amongst other things, does a great Favre imitation. Second down and three. Off the fake. That buys a ton of time. And then the pass is caught by Patrick Creighton up at the 43-yard line. So he grows up in Wisconsin. He does a great Favre imitation. Would we lie to you? Okay. <laughs> Chip, almost had me there, Chip. Didn't have him. Come on, Chip. All right. <laughs> I hope Brett's watching. You know, sometimes when you copy a guy, you just don't copy one thing about him. You copy everything about him. Yeah. Here's Jones exploiting a nice hole through the middle. That's a gain of seven. This drive started back at the 12-yard line. It's now second down and three. You know, you always want to get your quarterback in a rhythm, and I really feel that Tony Romo is in that rhythm now. And you know, maybe maybe he wanted to be Brett Favre and he watched Brett Favre and all that, but he really, and I hate to say, you know, Joe Montana, but I mean the way that ball comes out of there and his accuracy and velocity, he reminds me a lot of Joe Montana. Three and a half left in the half. You and I have talked, John, about it as Jones gains one. You know, we we watched Rex Grossman earlier this year, and you know he hadn't played that much because of injuries, but he he had it. We watched Philip Rivers that night on a Sunday night against Pittsburgh, and he he had it. If you were just to, you know to take all the numbers off these guys' uniforms, and the guy is watching television tonight, he looks at this quarterback, he thinks, hey, that guy's pretty good. He's probably in the league six or seven years. He's in the league four years, but he but he hasn't played much, and he's going to be defined in what he does in these situations like this. Third down and two from the 49-yard line. Well, there again, the look of a guy who knows exactly what he's doing. Pocket breaks down, needs a first down, scrambles for it. Pretty good definition. You know, I remember, remember uh, uh, John Gruden a couple years ago was saying that. That, that a quarterback, when he had Rich Gannon, he said he'd get five or six first downs on third down like this. And then he said, then I got Brad Johnson, and I really missed that. You don't realize how those plays, like that third down run, keep drives going. And he's kept a couple of them going tonight. Jones now has carried the ball 12 times for 51 yards. His brother Thomas, who plays for the Bears, had a three-figure day today as Chicago routed San Francisco to stay unbeaten. Drew Bledsoe now the backup. We come to the two-minute warning here in Charlotte. Dallas marching, but trailing. Carolina leading 14 to 7.
There are some athletes who always know where the camera is. Darrell Owens has never met a sky camera he didn't love. I think the greatest I ever saw was Reggie Jackson. Reggie always knew where the camera was. And nothing's changed with Reggie either, no, you know. Absolutely. Reggie can still find it. If he knew you had a good graphic about him, he would step out of the batter's box thinking, I know they're putting this up there right now. Second down and seven. The ball is at the 43-yard line. Two minutes to play in the half. Pick up the blitz. Romo going for Owens, but that is on the chalk out of bounds. And it will be Richard Marshall and Mike Minter covering on the play. Third down and seven. Yeah, they tried to get Terrell Owens on Marshall, the rookie. But again, Terrell Owens made that same mistake that he made before. He's too close to the sideline. And when you run and up, you have to give your quarterback, see his outside release, he gets too close and he doesn't give the quarterback any place to throw the ball. In fact, he's running out of bounds. And that's the second time he's done that in this half, and he knows better than that. Third and seven. Romo stepping up in the pocket and then hits Witten. And Witten will take the ball to the 30 yard line. So the tight end, Jason Witten, has been a, a big factor tonight for the Dallas Cowboys. That's a 14 yard gain. You know, and that's what the Cowboys are doing that they didn't do Monday night is is if they're giving you double coverage in the outside, if they're doing all their coverages to the outside, then work the inside, work the middle, work Witten. You know, you know, maybe get Terrell Owens in the slot and work him in the middle because they're really pressing or taking away those outside deep patterns. Third catch for Witten, and he has scored the only Dallas touchdown. First down here, and they're going to give the ball to Terry Glenn, but that is sniffed out beautifully by the Panthers you had five black shirts there led by Richard Marshall the rookie corner Yeah, they didn't have Keyshawn Johnson in there blocking the most dangerous defensive back and maybe they didn't have Steve Smith running it either because that was the exact same play that the Panthers scored on the Steve Smith Dallas only has one timeout they had to take a timeout then they lost a timeout on the unsuccessful challenge clock ticking down to 45 seconds second and 13. Romo down the left sideline and that one is out of bounds intended for Terry Glenn and again the coverage is very good and there's Marshall the rookie telling the 11 year guy Glenn I had you all the way well yeah but uh, I mean I mean Glenn again is too close to the sideline I mean you, you can't do that watch him they get the inside technique force him to the outside now where is Tony Romo going to throw that ball if he does catch it he's going to be out of bounds anyway that, I thought that was a bad call I mean they if they could get about a you know five or six or seven or eight yard play on that second down they would be in better field goal range and I don't think that they had to do that on second down those are two bad ups in a row right now that field goal range is 50 yards if they don't gain a yard here but they will and will not get the first down though though Glenn does get out of bounds at the 21 yard line. So with a half a minute to go, you've got a fourth down and one. So does Parcells go for a field goal here of about 37 or 38 yards to make it a four-point game? And that is apparently what he is going to do because yeah. he sends Vanderjet out onto the field. Yeah, he has fourth down. He has to kick the ball. I think if it were if it were third down, it would be an interesting thing. I mean, do you, you know, go get the first down and then you just try and get a first down and you throw it in the end zone? But I think on fourth down. Bill Parcells did what he had to do. Vanderjet earlier missed the 48. And this one, you've got a timeout here. You've got Marshall and Peppers coming in. Peppers known for kick blocking, but Carolina had taken a timeout. John Fox, the coach, called it. He ran down and he took the timeout before the ball was snapped. So That's going to go be an advantage, Cowboys. Wow, there goes the block kick. He calls the timeout. It is granted. The rule went in in 2004. There came Marshall from the outside, and you've got Peppers, number 90, who's a kick blocker extraordinaire who was there as well. But Vanderjat will now get another opportunity because of Fox's timeout. I remember last week when Bill Cower, the Steelers, called one, and then they made the field goal, but it didn't count, and then the next time they missed it, just the opposite happened here tonight. Here's a 38-yard attempt. 
And that one is right down Broadway for Vanderjad. So the Dallas Cowboys, who had trailed 14 0, now make it a four point game with 27 ticks left in the half. He's won six times, but he won the last one. They meet again on Sunday Night Football. And just so you know, the next two Sunday nights, Indy at New England, Bears at Giants on November 12th. Here's the kick, four yard line. Richard Marshall, who fumbled the last time he ran a kickback. This time he secures it, takes it out to the 27. 19 seconds left. Bob Costas in New York. Bob. All right, Al, and here's the guy, Mr. Collinsworth, who's been saying since preseason, Tony Romo should be the quarterback of the Cowboys. What's your first half report card? Hey, he's about to give me a heart attack. I can't imagine what he's doing to Bill Parcells, but he is playing better here lately. All right, more at halftime when we will unlatch the studio doors and let Jerome and Sterling in as well, Al. <laughs> All right, guys, Romo 13 out of 19 for 124 yards and three rushes for 17. Has his team back in the game after they were down 14 0. And now the Panthers will let Foster pretty much run out the clock here. But now Carolina will take a timeout and get in another play or two. Second and short timeout. Panthers. Again, setting the game up for you in terms of the standings. Carolina coming in four and three in a tough division where. New Orleans loses today but Atlanta wins so right now they're third in the NFC South and of course in the NFC East you've got the Giants now winning again today and for the Dallas Cowboys they're going to uh, begin this three game trip uh, and go home in between tonight's game and the game in Washington either four and three or three and four. Terrell Owens is new best friend. <laughs> You know, the one thing there's still a lot of football to be played. I mean, if if Tony Romo is the is the real deal and the, and the Cowboys can get one here, uh, uh, they have a pretty good shot. Eight seconds. Timeout taken here. Eight ticks left. In field goal range. I don't think John Fox has cleared his head yet from taking that timeout when they <laughs> blocked the field goal. <laughs> Might be right. Second and two. At the 47. And they go to Smith, and that'll look good on the stat sheet, but that's all. And you still have, I mean, the clock looks like it's in a molasses pot. Two seconds? Well, they're going to set up a John Casey. This would have to be a 60. Five yard attempt. So you'd have you'd have a, a new NFL record here. Last week you had a 62 yarder. The record is 63 by Tom Dempsey and Jason Elam. This would be an NFL record of 65 yards. Instead, you're going to get a run back here or a fumble as Aaron Glenn. And Bill Parcells is hard as in his throw right now. I, I think he just wants to see Glenn just go down, which he does at the 13-yard line. That's what got Bill out of coaching in the first place. Good half, though. 14-10. Bob Chris Sterling in the bus. Start the halftime show coming up from New York after this. 28 Emmy Awards. Thanksgiving. NFL Network. Is a touchdown. And the day didn't stop right there for Michael Vick. He comes back again, throws one to Justin Griffith. Big day for Michael Vick. He threw for three touchdowns. Meanwhile, Chicago was up 41-0 at halftime over San Francisco. This one to Desmond Clark from Rex Grossman, who recovered from that sixth turnover night at Arizona. The Bears are 7-0 for the first time since their Super Bowl season of 85. In Oakland, the Steelers had a chance, bust, but what happened? Oh, interception! Oh, my gosh. Ben Roethlisberger threw two picks for touchdowns. This one, Chris Carr, a 100-yard return. And Oakland wins despite being outgained 360 yards to just 98. Four picks overall for Roethlisberger. His team is now two and five. And afterwards, there are his numbers for the day. And afterwards, here are the reactions of coach and QB. 
Oh, I don't feel comfortable throwing four interceptions. But, uh, you know, that's, that's one of those days that Ben had, and he's going to have to bounce back from it. Well, it starts with me. <laughs> you know, i got to start playing better. And uh, right now I'm letting the whole team down. Our defense plays good. Our O-line plays good. Our receivers do good. Um, and it just seems like, the, you know, one guy makes a mistake, and that's me. So i got to limit the mistakes, and um, hopefully we can get, get back on track if I start playing better. Bus. Are your boys finished? Not quite finished. They're close to being done, but they, they have maybe a one-game uh, edge left. You know, Ben has to play a lot better. They have to hold on to the football in the running game. They're just turning the football over too much. Well, I think this is a copycat league, and if the Dallas Cowboys and everybody else can do it when their quarterback struggles, when is Charlie Batch going to get in that lineup to try and right the ship for the Pittsburgh Steelers? All right. Don't go anywhere. Fantastic game in Denver today between the Colts and the Broncos. Highlights when we come back. With a groin injury. You know, I talked to Bill Parcells. I said, how's Tony Romo doing? He said, we just want him to speed up the tempo of the game. We're very happy with the way we're moving the ball. We spotted them in 14, but we got back 10. We can move the ball in them. We're getting plenty of yards. And Romo threw for 124 yards in the first half, 13 of 19, one touchdown, one pick. Here's Julius Jones. Jones has now carried 13 times for a total of 53 yards. Then we'll check out some of the numbers through the first 30 minutes of play. Rushing about equal. Dallas a little bit more through the air and in total yardage and the time of possession Carolina of course was able to capitalize on the, the turnover the interception also the shorter field because of the Vanderjet field goal for their two scores second and ten. Stepping up, there's a flag. Owens makes the catch, and with that spin move, picks up the first down. But you saw the flag come in. Scott Green is the referee tonight. Tell you the penalties are really are really killing the Cowboys and Tony Romo Illegal because hands to the this face. will be the third 75 one. 75 offense, 10 yard penalty, second down. Mark Colombo trying to block Peppers, and and all of them have negated big gains. Right, and good plays by Tony Romo. Here's Colombo right here against Peppers, and you see he has the, the right hand on the face mask. You know, stuff like that happens in those in those trenches. I mean that that's that kind of thing happens all the time. I mean, poor old Mark Colombo, he's he's fighting for his life out there against Julius Peppers. That's why they keep the tight end on that side a lot too, to to give him help in this situation. Second and twenty. Romo hanging right in and guns it over the middle. Throws a strike to Terry Glenn, who's tackled by Mike Minter, but that's a gain of 21 and a first down for the Cowboys. Yeah, they've been they've been setting that play up where they where they move Terry Glenn around, and that time you see him, he came out of the backfield. And they had done that in the first half, but remember in the first half how they were trying to work those ups and stuff, and 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 the Panthers are taking it away. So now they put Terry Glenn inside. Put him in the backfield, run him out of the backfield on an inside pass route. That has to be there. They don't throw to their backs, but they will throw to a guy coming out of the backfield. Here is Jones chugging up to the 35 for a gain of three, second down and seven. They were talking about Tony Romo and what he adds to this team, but it's not always throwing and play calling but it's being able to get first downs like this I mean, sometimes you have to move in the pocket sometimes you have to bootleg but sometimes you have to run for first down that throw there when you throw from the far hash mark and you the toughest throw you have to make so I've been I've been impressed with everything that Tony Roma's done hangs in again under pressure here's Owens and Owens is able to hand check Minter and pick up the first down and you notice a new life in Terrell Owens I mean I felt you know last week that, that that he didn't have a lot of life in him that he wasn't really working real hard but he's a playmaker when he doesn't get the ball he does get frustrated you know and he wants a ball and it looks like Tony Romo understands that and he's going to find a way to get him to the ball I wouldn't we've seen Terry Glenn in the in, in the backfield I wouldn't be surprised if somewhere we see Terrell Owens back there and as you saw he ties Michael Irvin and Charlie Joyner 750 career catches and there's 751 but that's not a particularly memorable one because he loses yardage on it and Richard Marshall who took over for the injured Ken Lucas at the right corner spot makes the hit 
Got his socks knocked off. Now that's the thing that they, they they try and do that spot pass when when the corner is way off and you can just hit him out there with the ball quickly and let him run and gain eight or ten yards before the corner can get there. But on that time, Marshall was just too tight on him. Second down and ten. The ball is at the 45-yard line. Good fake, rolling right, chased by Peppers, gets away from him, and turns what would have been a sack into a little bit of a gain as he gets it up to the 46 yard line we were talking to Bill Parcells last night who said as we mentioned a great degree of uncertainty so he said would you make barring an injury a quarterback change again in the middle of this game and Bill looked at us and he said it's real simple unless Romo's in the hearse he's in right he's gonna I mean he's his guy and he's going to to go with him and you know he's put all his you know chips in his pocket and that's that's what he's going to do but and and the, the thing that bothers him is the unknown. I mean, you know what he does in practice, you know what he does in preseason, but you don't know what he does as a starter. Julius Peppers just injured his hand and came out after the last play when Romo spun away from him, and then Romo buys time, but nobody is there. And it'll be fourth down, and the punting group comes in. But that's the thing that Romo can do. You know, we showed where he can, you know, just stay in the pocket and throw the ball. We showed where he could move a little and throw it. We, we showed where he could run and get a first down. And that was just buying a little time in the pocket to let his guy get deep. Didn't work, but he, I mean, he did have a, a shot at a big play on that third down. Sammy Baugh holds the NFL record 51.4 yard punting average back in 1940. McBriar is chasing it. He's averaging 50 and a half. And this one will bounce at the one, but bound into the end zone. 54 yard poop but only a 34 net after the touchback the and the gang at the 20 when we come back Panthers by four yeah that's Carolina barbecue pulled pork pulled pork yeah that's that's a good way to have pork I'll tell you that pulled pork and coleslaw poop better than pork chops Game yeah, you, two. See what, you see what they did they, they put it in the smoker first it looked like it they kind of smoked it mm -hmm. then they grilled it and then they cut it. Why? Why is a, a pork chop sort of dry, but pulled pork is moist? I think. I think because they put it in the, uh, you know, they put it in the smoker. I mean, it's a, it's a slow cooking thing. They don't. I think they cook a pork chop. What the heck do I know? I think they cook <laughs> a pork chop faster, and I think they slow cook pulled pork. I'm buying it. <laughs> Second and seven. Thank you, Julia Child. Here is Deshaun Foster up to the. 25 yard line Aiken Adele making the tackle the key Carolinians tonight how have they been doing well Jake DeLome 79 yards 9 out of 14 Deshaun Foster 35 yards it's a 3 2 average and Steve Smith four receptions for 28 yards Keyshawn Johnson has not made a catch, but Steve Smith did have the one rush of 24 yards for a touchdown. And I think the Panthers have to get their wide receivers more involved in this game. Third and five is DeLong. Pulls it down, and then the pass is incomplete. The crowd wants a flag. They don't get one. DeLong pleads the case. And then it comes in at, at the very end. It came in about five or six seconds later. Anthony Henry with the coverage Bill Parcells last night when we asked him who's been your best defensive players this year he mentioned one guy he said Anthony Henry well the other guy was Demarcus Ware and, mm -hmm. and I think that that, that that he thought that Anthony, Anthony Henry has been defense, very consistent number 20 number 41 first down well, I said 41 which is Newman but involved in the play was Anthony Henry 42 right there and you see that he just he just has a hold of him off the line now you can you, you can jam him five yards off the line but then you have to let him go and I think I think he did I think he had to jam a little longer than he should have and then at the end of the jam he grabbed it. So he politicked along did because that that flag came in a good five seconds after the play 31 yard line first down the long throws and the catch is made by Keyshawn Johnson Covered by Aaron Glenn, and Keyshawn was able to come back, stop, 
and make the, the grab, his yeah. first catch of the night. And, you know, with Keyshawn Johnson, even Bill Parcells was saying last night, he said it looks like Jake DeLome is realizing now that, that he doesn't have to be open to throw him the ball. And if you watch Keyshawn Johnson here, he isn't open on this one. But, but he is so big and he uses his body so well and he could put his body in one place and make your body go to another place that he can catch those kinds of passes. Glenn kept running and Johnson stopped and makes the catch and the ball is at the 50 yard line. 15 to play in the third. Foster to the outside. Talked before about the fact that the Panthers don't run very much outside. In fact, between the tackles, they run the ball a larger percentage of the time than any team in the league. Well, you know what they were doing there? They go three wide receivers and, and they get the Cowboys and nickel or five defensive backs, get one of the linebackers out of there, so then it's a little easier to run. And they've been trying to run inside, and that time they tried to get an edge out there. Now the Cowboys, in this situation, have six defensive backs. Second and five at the Dallas 45 yard line. Four man rush. They get to DeLone, but he gets it off. And the pass intended for Keyshawn Johnson is incomplete with Terrence Newman covering on the play this time. Yeah, he, had, face uh, he, yeah. he had Terrence Newman beat there because Newman you watch him he's looking inside he lets Keyshawn gets to the outside and then by the time he relocates him Keyshawn is beyond him and he didn't look back at the ball mm -hmm. that should have been pass interference right, and that's what Johnson Johnson was pleading that case yeah, because you have to you have to look back to the ball or try and make a play in the ball not including your rear end. <laughs> Timeout taken here. It's third down and five. DeLome to the sideline. Timeout Carolina halfway through the third. Panthers by four. Hello, I'm a Mac. And I'm a PC. What's with... Three personality pro... I think Microsoft Office for years. Microsoft Office works tough. Oh, boy. Well, oh, I knew this day would come. PC. Exactly. Now, add you yours free after rebate with new singular calling plans. Let's Talk has the best prices, the best plans, and the most free phones guaranteed. Log on to 21letstalk.com or call now to order your free Motorola Razor. Let's Talk, the smart way to shop for cell phones. So log on or call now. In today's trends, TV personality Carson Daly handed over a $50,000 check from... Too intelligent to be categorized. The RAV4 from Toyota. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge to help you find your perfect flat panel TV. I pledge to watch football only on Saturday and Sunday. I pledge to set up your HD right. And Monday. I pledge to show this off to my girlfriends. And sometimes Thursday. I your healthcare provider determined you were disabled. Call now for a confidential consultation. If you're a doctor, lawyer, trader, accountant, or any other professional who was denied a long-term disability claim, call 1-800-520-2781 in confidence. We're standing by 24 hours a day to take your call. Next Sunday, 2.30 Eastern, just three races to go. The chase... It's the stretch run from Texas. You see racing Tony Stewart winning today in Atlanta. Dale Earnhardt Jr. jumping up a couple of spots to four. Three races to go. Next L Cup racing from Texas. Panthers. Blitz on. Penalty flag thrown. Steve Smith can't get there. Penalty the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that's been one constant for this Cowboy defense is they've been Blitzing almost every third down against the Panthers. Come on, Tony. Offsides. Come on, Tony. Number 94, five yard penalty. First down. 
It's DeMarcus Ware. And so instead of it being fourth down, here's a first down at the 40 yard line. Here's DeMarcus Ware. You see the blitz is going to be up on top, and it says that he just jumped into the neutral zone. The neutral zone, of course, is the football, the length of the football. The guy that called that was the official on this side, Tony Viterni Jr. Yep. That was the Tony, and come on, Tony. Like he might have lined up in the neutral zone. At the 40 yard line, a little toss back to Foster to the outside, and he gets taken down by Anthony Henry. Gain of two, maybe three. Second down and seven now at the 37 yard line. You remember Tony Viteri Sr.? Yes. Yeah, he was an official in the league. I mean, his dad, this is Tony Jr., I saw him at our hotel. The officials were staying at, at our hotel and uh, said to say hello to his dad. His dad was. You know, probably as a coach in the NFL, you shouldn't have a favorite official, but Tony Viteri, uh, senior, was always one of my favorites. Now don't, you, can, don't, you don't, can don't ask why. Well, you can tell the truth now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, you can say I hated that guy. But no, I like Tony Viteri, senior. Second down and seven at the 37 yard line. And that's behind Foster, and he can't make the catch. Covered on the play by Brady James. It'll be third down and seven. You know, a lot of times you get into stats and it's, you know, third down, third down conversion. We haven't been good. We haven't been, you know, consistent. But sometimes it's a bad play on first down, or sometimes like that play, it's a bad play on second down that puts you in to a third and longer situation. And again, I would anticipate that in this situation, the Cowboys would blitz. You got Johnson split right. You've got Smith in the slot to the left. And Drew Carter wide to the left. Will the Cowboys come? Yes, they do. The long throws. And it's dropped. It's Keyshawn Johnson who had beaten Anthony Henry. Clearly for a first down, maybe for a touchdown. And Keyshawn simply couldn't hold on to it. Yeah, they had the perfect play for the perfect situation. They knew the Cowboys were going to blitz. Here comes Roy Williams on the outside of the blitz. Keyshawn gets by his guy. The ball is perfectly thrown, and he drops it. I mean, those are the things that, as a coach, just drive you crazy. You know, you set it up. You set it up. You have the right play. You get it blocked up, and then you drop the ball. Beautiful little inside move to spring him. Now Jason Baker into punt. Floating kick. Fair caught 13 yard line by Patrick Creighton. Romo and the offensive gang back to work. 617 remaining. Third quarter. 14 to 10, Carolina. Performed admirably to this point. Has his team down by four. The ball is at the 13 yard line. Jones. You know it's amazing. Tony Romo played at Eastern Illinois, small football school, one double A. They have only one player in the league from Eastern Illinois right now, and there he is. But there are three head coaches from Eastern Illinois: Mike Shanahan, Brad Childress up at Minnesota, Sean Payton with New Orleans. And there was Mike and Sean in their days as Panthers. That's what they were. The Eastern or are the Eastern Illinois Panthers. Good coaches. You know, there was a time in the NFL that you never looked at anyone that come from a college that east in front of it. <laughs> yeah, this is Terrell Owens up to the 31, picking up the first down. They always talked about Miami of Ohio as the cradle of coaches. Well, right now in the NFL, Eastern Illinois is the cradle of coaches. And and on that last pass, he looked like he came from the the cradle of coaches and the cradle of a quarterback. And watch him here. It's a little it's a little rollout to that side and. His release, I love that release. I mean, that's that's the thing in pro football that you have to have. You have to be able to make the decision and get the ball out of there quickly. And there goes Jones with some tough running up to the 45-yard line. Anthony Fasano, the tight end, led the blocking. So from the 13, they moved it out almost to midfield. Ball at the 45. Yeah, you know, we always talk about the the game being won in the pits. I mean, it's the offensive line against the defensive line, and and now is the time I think that those battles are most important. I mean, you kind of spar the first and second quarter, then you get into the third quarter, close to the fourth quarter. Now it's which lines dominate. 
They're doing a real good job pass protecting tonight. And you've got a flag here coming in from the back judge. So the penalty would figure to be, and it is, against Carolina in the secondary. And that's going to be an automatic first down for Dallas. But was the ball tipped is now the question. Because if it was tipped, then the flag gets picked up. And Carolina tips Legal a contact. lot of passes. Number 20, five-yard penalty, first down. But there's no tip. At least none that was discernible to any of the officials, and that's on Gamble. Well, see what he could do. I mean, they could have called the the illegal shot before the ball was thrown. You know, so it's just a five-yard penalty. You see Gamble right here. Oh, geez, that's not much at all, is it? No, I mean, if they can't if they can't do that, they can't play. <laughs> that was. That, yeah. Either that or he gave the wrong number. Yeah, that was that that was bad. That that was nothing on Gamble there. Yeah. First down, 50-yard line. Romo to the outside, and that's caught by Fasano, the tight end out of Notre Dame, rookie picked in the second round. You know, you know, I'm talking about the offensive line, and and Mark Colombo has really done a good job, Al. I thought that that, that would be a mismatch. I mean, he had to block Julius Peppers, and Julius Peppers, one of the best pass rushers in the league, and. I thought Colombo, you know, had been a little soft at that position, that right tackle, but he hasn't been soft tonight. I mean, I mean, he's been going after Peppers, and that's been a pretty good battle, and Colombo has won his share of them. He got schooled by Strahan last week. Here is Jones through the middle to the 42-yard line. Well, a couple of those things, I think, were just missed pass protections. I mean, one time, they, you know, they had a blitz on, and Colombo, you know, blocked down and just let Strahan come, so... Part of it was physical. I mean, this offensive line on Monday night against the Giants wasn't physical at all. They got whipped. Today, or tonight, they're a lot more physical. Romo's been sacked only once. Part of that is the offensive line, and, a, and, a, and maybe a bigger part of that is Romo. Shotgun, third and two. Romo throws, and it's incomplete, intended for Owens. And Owens with a flag down was covered by the linebacker, the former Green Bay Packer Niall Diggs. Flag at the 44 yard line, which is two yards behind the line of scrimmage. Holding offense, number 62. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. Marco Rivera. You know, when Drew Bledsoe was a starting quarterback, Terry Glenn was kind of his guy. And don't you get the feeling tonight that maybe with Tony Romo that Terrell Owens is his guy if there's someone you have to you know and again you just can't watch one guy and throw to him you don't do that in pro football but you kind of have a guy that if you can you're going to get the ball to him he's thrown to Owens eight times to Glenn four times meanwhile Steve Smith goes back to return this kick which is a wobbly end over end punt that Smith is going to collect at the two yard line not many guys do that but when you're Steve Smith you can take a chance and Smith Brings it back out to the 18-yard line. You don't see very many punts fielded at the two-yard line. 3:14 left in the third. Four-point game. Carolina leads. He's the NFL's purest passer. He's the NFL's biggest winner. Their battle rages on next week on Sunday Night Football. Undefeated Colts going into New England next Sunday. Following Sunday, Bears Giants here on NBC as DeLone goes back on first down and throws and finds the open man who is Steve Smith. Got into a seam in the middle, spins the ball at the 45 yard line, and they'll mark it down at the 40 for a first down, a 22 yard gain. Yeah, and that's what they had to do. I mean, they had, had Steve Smith out here and they were using that cover two, and he was doubled all the time. And this is one way to get away from it. You know, instead of running up and running into that safety, run up and then run in. So you're you're away from the corner and you're in front of the safety that is double covering. You. Ball at the 40-yard line. Toss back Foster. Some room to the outside to the 45. We go to Andrea. Well, at the end of the last drive after the incompletion of Keyshawn Johnson on third down, a frustrated Johnson came off the field. He said to Jake DeLome, look, I lost the ball in the lights. DeLome said, I understand. But he pointed at him and said, it's okay, because I'm going to come right back to you. Good eavesdropping. Maybe he was just kidding, though, too. <laughs> 
Because he didn't. He went right back to Steve Smith. Second down and five. The ball at the 45-yard line. Foster. And he gets by where, but then help arrives in the form of Brady James and Chris Canty. You see what Roy Williams did to Keyshawn Johnson that time? You know, Keyshawn Johnson had blocked Roy Williams, who's a, a real tough guy. He had, he had blocked him on that touchdown. And that time Keyshawn went in to block him kind of kind of standing straight up and Roy Williams just knocked him right on his back. <laughs> but you just see here's here's Keyshawn right here and he's going to go up to to block Roy Williams right here. Oink. <laughs> he sent old Keyshawn right back where he came from. Practiced against each other the last couple of years and Keyshawn was with the Cowboys. Third down and three. And DeLome sends one into the night sky that is incomplete, intended for Chris Mangum. High floating pass. And Roy Williams was right there, and he threw that right in the area where the the uh, lights get in their eyes, huh? I guess. Same spot where relative area where Keyshawn couldn't handle it. In comes Jason Baker to punt. Fifth punt of the night for the Carolina kicker. Patrick Creighton to run it back. Creighton feels at the 16 yard line. Dumped at the 23 yard line. Christian Morton makes the tackle. Final minute, third quarter. Carolina 14, Dallas 10. Tomorrow night, following heroes you will see Friday night lights that's tomorrow night Monday night at a special day and time here on NBC downtown Charlotte Charlotte home of the Bobcats of the NBA they'll open their season Wednesday Bank of America Stadium home of the Carolina Panthers Al Michaels John Madden Andrew Kramer start the fourth quarter on first and 10 at the end of the third year and Romo has that one knocked away by Kimiatu the former Baltimore Raven number 99 who was picked up in the offseason. Yeah, I think the Panthers every year lead football in 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 knock balls and tip balls and those kinds of things because they're defensive linemen. First of all to get tip balls you have to get a pretty good push and they get a good push then make that guy step up and then the tackles as they're getting the push when the ends come around the tackles just have to get their hands up and they do an excellent job of that shotgun as they empty the backfield and his action on the left side of the offensive line with Chris Jenkins coming across and Scott Green checking with the officials to see if he was induced you have three different flags so did each of the guys see it the same way when Chris Jenkins starts going there's no stopping it <laughs> that's right I mean, he is the yeah. biggest man I think I've ever seen. Well, I don't know that, I mean, but he is a big man. He's not a fat guy. I mean, he's a big guy, and, and he's probably about 15 or 20 pounds more right now than he was when he was really dominant. Neutral zone infraction. Defense. Number 77. Five-yard penalty. Second down. I mean, just lining up, he's going to, you know, have some neutral zone infractions. <laughs> right. It's hard. It's hard to keep it all on one side of the ball. Pretty tough to jump back on side. But I tell you, he does, and he gets penetration there, and that really helps the run. The other thing is that stunt when Mike Rucker, the defensive end, comes inside and he gets a push, that is really tough to block. The five receivers in this set, Romo out of the shotgun. Romo has time. Romo hits Witten, and Witten takes it out to the 41 yard line. So Jason Witten. Makes his fourth grab of the night. Owens has caught eight. Glenn has caught four. Witten now four. Yeah, Tony Romo told us last night that he was going to do some of that. They were going to do some of that empty backfield. And he said, I tell you, when, when I get in it, we're going to get rid of the ball quickly. I mean, it's not going to be one thing where you go empty and you have you don't have an extra pass protector in there. You spread them out. You're not going to stand back there and hold the ball. First and ten. They've got Marion Barber, who normally plays on third down in the game on first down here. The point is the fullback and they toss it to Barber. Some of the former New York Jet 
up to the 48 yard line and that'll take us down to the end of the third quarter good game Carolina literally 14 nothing Dallas has scored 10 unanswered points 15 minutes of regulation left in Charlotte 14 to 10 Panthers NBC tomorrow an all new heroes save the cheerleader save the world witness the phenomenon then it's your chance to catch Friday Night Lights on a special night in time. I see us winning out there tonight. It's all new tomorrow on NBC. I got to get up early. I got to be on time. Do you believe in doing more than what's expected? You're a Ford kind of guy. It's Truck Month. We challenge you to find a tougher, stronger truck than Ford's Super Duty. Best in class, payload and towing. That's why F-Series is number one. Now get a 2006 Super Duty with 0% financing for 60 months or discount savings of up to $7,700. Cause I'm built Ford tough. I can't download anything. I can't put anything in. I can't work like this. If I rewire this hub, would that give us a faster connection? Well, you'd think with three different providers, our network would work. Uh, hey, you guys could just use Quest. Managing your network instead of your business? Quest delivers high-speed internet and digital voice, all for only $96 per month. Get smart business solutions from Quest. Call 800-242-5000. That's our spirit of service. In the uncompromising world of professional grade, there's new reason to celebrate. Pile on extra bonus cash during GMC Truck Month. Plus get the GM 100,000 mile warranty on 2007 models. But hurry, game ends October 31st. Qualified lessees use Truck Month bonus cash to get a low mileage lease on an 07 Sierra Classic 1500 Extended Cab SLE for around $269 a month. Call for residency restrictions and details. See participating Colorado GMC dealers. Winds of change coming to the metro area, the forecast at 10. Oh, an unusual position. 70 straight starts. That's over four years' worth of games. Of course, a lot of those in Buffalo after he had left New England, then with Dallas. But this is Tony Romo's team at the moment. So Bledsoe with the jacket on as we start the fourth quarter. It is second down and four for the Cowboys, who trail 14 to 10. Marion Barber is the running back. He just carried for six on the last play of the third quarter. And now he starts the fourth with a run that should be good for a first down of the 48-yard line. Let's go to Andrea. Well, you're talking about Drew Bledsoe now. Before the game, he told me, I don't like or agree with this decision, but he said anybody that's lucky enough to play pro football can complain about these circumstances. He said for 14 years, he's been lucky enough to look back and not hang his head about anything. He would not wrap it up in any way, and he said in a different role, but he's going to do everything he can to help his team win now. And he said that's the last time you'll hear me talk about it. And... For Bledsoe as Romo goes back and throws and that pass is incomplete. It might be the end of his career. I mean at this particular point he's been in the league since 93 but as usual and we've known him through the years John he takes the high road and he did tonight. Right and and he has a lot of pride and and he's been a great quarterback and he's not going to be a backup. I mean I you know if someone wanted Drew Bledsoe as a starter maybe he would play longer but. I don't see him playing after this year unless he's guaranteed to be a starter. He's not he's not going to sit around and hold a clipboard. Second and ten the ball is at the 48 yard line. Romo the open man is Witten again. So Witten having his best game of the season takes it to the 22 yard line. That's a 26 yard game. You know, and that's the advantage of having Terry Glenn on one side and Terrell Owens on the other side. You do have stuff in the middle. Do you see that safety was going out there to get out there to the wide receivers? Julius Peppers, a defensive end, he's, he's dropping back in a zone dog. But the zone, because they're so conscious of the two outside wide receivers, they leave a lot of stuff open in the middle. They're wrapping some tape around the midsection of Julius Jones, unless Barber is in the game. Again, Barber is normally the third down back. We're carrying on first down here. Carried at the end of the third quarter. Takes the ball to the 19-yard line. That's a gain of two, second and eight. The one thing about Marion Barber and the reason that, that, that he's in there on, 
on third down. It is he's a good pass protector. He's a good pass receiver, but also a good pass protector. And when you get down into this area, this red zone, you have to think blitz. You have to think that either on this second down or on the third down, you're going to get a blitz. Second and eight out of the shotgun. Romo, a lot of time, dumps it off to Barber underneath. And Barber will get inside the 15 before he is finally knocked down by Chris Gamble, close to a first down. Yeah, big play there by Marion Barber. I mean, you know, the a lot of times they say, you know, hit that underneath guy and he'll get the first down for you. He didn't, but he has to make a play like that. I mean, if you have to come to that check down guy, that short guy like Barber here, now after he catches it, he has to make six or seven yards or get you in that first down position or close to it. Third and inches. And Barber gets the first down. And Barber takes the ball inside the 10, and the flag comes in at the end of the play. Owen's expression indicating it's going to go against Dallas. And Mike Minter's uh, expression is going to go against Dallas. Holding offense, number 81, 10 yard penalty, third down. Well, that's why Owens was gesturing the way he was. And he, you know, and you like those wide receivers to block, and you like them to get out there in front, but. You know, you can't have them hold. I mean, you just, just, I mean, it's not that big a thing. You don't have to do that. Just get your hands off him. Mean, that's not that big a block anyway. And he did hold him. Mm -hmm. But he didn't have to. I mean, just, you know, just, just use your body, shield him off, do something, but, but keep your hands to yourself. So instead of a first down, another very costly penalty. Every time Dallas has had an offensive penalty tonight, it's been in a key situation to negate a long or an important game. They put Tony Romo in some tough situations. Third down and seven. The ball is at the 19-yard line. Panthers show blitz. Did they come across the line? Romo clapping his hands as if to indicate they came across, but the officials say no. And that's the blitz that I was talking about. You knew you were going to get it on second or third down. If you didn't get it on second, you're we'll probably start. going to get it on third. Center. Five-yard penalty. Third down. That's Gerard. You know, sometimes they'll start, you know, any any movement, anytime you start that ball, you have to bring it all away. Yep. Just a little flinch. If you have the ball, you can't you can't do it. We'll see that's gonna be the case here. Well barely perceptible. I don't I don't know exactly <laughs> yeah. what he did. I'm not sure either. Third down and twelve, the ball is at the twenty four yard line. Romo back under center with the crowd roaring. Tony steps away, moves the shoulders, throws, caught 10 yard line Jason Witten. I mean, that's a play of a great veteran quarterback makes. Feels the pressure. Here comes, here comes the defense. Move the shoulders, fired over the middle, strike. First down. That's the exact thing I think Bill Parcells was looking for. You're, you're going to get some pass rush, but be able to get away from it right there, buy some more time, and find that. I mean, that is a big, big, big play by Tony Romo. First and goal. That was a 16-yard gain on a third and 12. And I have got Barber who gets stood up at the seven-yard line. I think the Cowboys are doing a lot of. They're using a fullback, so they have a lead block for their running. And it's been it's been Oliver Hoyt, the fullback, but it's also been Anthony Fasano. They, they've had like three or four different guys in that fullback position, and they've been able to get some power and some leads because of it. Parcells saying last year that position is becoming extinct. Not yet. <laughs> right, and Anthony Fasano is listed as a tight end, but Parcells will tell you he's really a fullback. Second and goal. Romo to the outside, and that is caught there by Fasano. But he's going to be taken down at the eight yard line. So that's a loss. Chris Gamble with the tackle. A good tackle by Chris Gamble and that's what you know today's corners in the NFL have to be tacklers because offenses can force you to tackle. I mean they can run that toss out there and crack and make you be the force guy and support guy or they can just throw that quick one out there and make you make the tackle or it's a touchdown. Third and six ball spotted at the six and Parcells says this play is too important. Time out. Talk it over. Exactly ten to play in regulation. Panthers by four in Charlotte. 
by Dell. We don't make technology for just anyone. We make it for only one, you. And by UBS, a global financial firm with the heart and soul of a two-person organization. I know one thing that uh, uh, John Fox is looking for down here because he talked to us about it the other day, his quarterback run. And maybe they're out a little too far for, for that quarterback draw, but this is the area that Bill Parcells has really liked to run the quarterback. And Romo is just the guy to do it. Third down and goal. Fake to Barber. To his left he goes, and then the pass is off the hand of Witten. So he went Witten's way again. Thomas Davis, the linebacker, covering. And Carolina will still have the lead, even if Vander Jack's field goal is good. And you like what the Cowboys are doing here. You see Witten here. That's that's the best matchup. I mean, when when you, when you can get your tight end on a linebacker, that's the way you want to go. I mean, if they're doubling other people, if they're going to leave a tight end on, I mean, a linebacker on Witten, then you have to go to him. 24-yard attempt. Romo holds. Vanderjatt's kick is good. So it's a one-point game. 9:52 left in the fourth. 14-13. Panthers. Jay Leno this week. Guests include Rachel Ray, Tim Allen, Roseanne, Emma Thompson, Penelope Cruz, and Russell Crowe. The Tonight Show with Jay Leno this week on NBC. Rachel Ray, that's where I'll learn how to cook those pork chops so they're not dry. Find out yeah, why those why that pulled pork is so moist. No, pulled pork is a lot better than pork chops. Much Get better. better. That. Much better. Bouncing kick. Fielded inside the 10 yard line and going back to get it was Brad Hoover and the ball is loose at the 15 yard line and the Dallas Cowboys have recovered. So the kick bouncing around and again Carolina with trouble on a run back. They recovered one before back at their 11 yard line and this time it's Sam Hurd. Now the question is was his knee down and there's nobody more interested in this right now than Mr. John Fox. I think every time there's a fumble now in the National Football League, we have to look for an excuse that it's not a fumble. Looks like Hoover's knee, it looks like it was down before the ball comes out. There's the knee is down now. And I don't know where the ball is. Well, I think I think it's very close, and you're going to get Carolina a challenge. Is challenging the ruling on the field. So they'll take a look. Huge call coming up when Scott Green goes under the hood. This is going to be a really very close call here because we've been After looking at it. Here comes play, Green. The ruling on the field stands. Carolina's charged with a second timeout. We were looking at it during the commercial break, and there's not enough evidence to overturn. Remember, the, the, the ruling on the field was a fumble. The ball is coming out. The question is, was his knee down? And you never see if the knee was down before the ball was pulled out by Sam Hurd, number 17, who also recovered it. Yeah, I mean, you have to protect the ball, and, and I like to see that. I mean, if a, if a guy fumbles, it's a doggone fumble. It's, it's, now it seems like with instant replay, we always want to find out why it wasn't a fumble. And you look, and you look, and you look. And I'd like to get back in football where a fumble is a fumble, and that was a fumble. That was a fumble. Julius Jones is back in the game. Jones, a burst through the middle, into the end zone. And the Dallas Cowboys have erased a 14-point deficit and lead 19-14. to 14. Boy, so, did Julius Jones hit that thing in there, didn't oof, he? Boy. Well, so each team now, after a big turnover, Steve Smith... A run for a touchdown earlier on one play, and then after the fumble here, Julius Jones the burst through the middle, straight to the end zone. Well, it said Kyle Kozer starts on a double and then gets up to the linebacker in the second level. That's what you have to do: get that nose tackle, get him out of there, and then get up on your linebacker. And Kyle Kozer on that play got a twofer. And now with the score, 19-14, mathematics tells you a two-point conversion is in order. To make it a one touchdown game instead of a two field goal game. Tony Romo out of the shotgun for the two point conversion. Fake draw throws converts to Owens for two points. 
So Terrell Owens now makes it a seven point game 21 to 14. The Dallas Cowboys in a vital and critical game behind Romo have taken the lead. I like your nine yards and just caught that two point conversion. Dallas dominating in terms of time of possession in terms of yardage and now on top by a score of 21 to 14. You know, and that's the difference between getting turnovers and giving turnovers. Vanderjack. Kickoff fielded by Richard Marshall. He had a Fresno State to the 26 yard line. Let's go back to the two point conversion and some great deception here by Romo. Right. I know I know that the that the Panthers were playing quarterback draw. So so he goes up fakes like he's going to run the quarterback draw comes back and throws it to Terrell Owens. In fact did you see Julius Peppers there. He started back in. He was playing <laughs> quarterback draw. And then so so Romo said that's what you want. We'll think it. Now there's the old giant nose tackle Jim Burt. Talk about the 10 guys that called Bill Parcells last week. I'm sure Jim Burt was one of them. The pass is dropped by Michael Gaines. How about that little love tap from Parcells to the player? <laughs> well, you know, the player is a playmaker. Panthers have not been making very many plays since the last time they scored with 121 to go in the first period. Three punts and a missed field goal, and then they fumbled the kickoff, and that was huge. Second and ten at the 26 yard line. Nine and a half left in regulation. Under pressure, DeLome escapes, and then Foster drops it out in the flag. When the crowd gets angry. Yeah, Jake DeLome's getting frustrated too because it's those types of things, you know, again, we go back to the third down that, that a bad play on second down will a lot of times put you in a tough situation on third down and is doing exactly that right here. Five drops by the Panthers tonight. Third and ten. In Carolina last in the league in third down conversions tonight overall two out of seven. I don't know that he's gone back to Keyshawn Johnson yet, has he, since he dropped that one? No. He said he was. There's Johnson in motion. Three receivers to the right. DeLome looking that way. DeLome sends one to the sideline, and then that's incomplete. And you've got Johnson and Carter both in the same area. Yep, the Panthers are getting frustrated now. And I think, you know, you drop a ball, you get third and long, you have two guys running the same area. You know, when you have that, one of the guys ran the wrong pattern. and. And I'll tell you, it is frustrating the heck out of Jake DeLone. And about 65,000 others as well. Jason Baker to punt. Terrence Newman this time back. Rotating return men for Dallas, depending on the situation. 21 yard line. Newman. And he gets taken down after a run back of five. They'll spot him. Up at the 26-yard line, tackled by Diggs. 9:09 to go in Charlotte. Cowboys by a touchdown. The game tonight. It's the Sirius Satellite Radio post-game report. Our Sunday night rock star of the game. Interviews and highlights right after the game. And it's been a good game. 21-14 Dallas. Carolina led early. 14 to nothing. 21 unanswered points now. Tony Romo in his starting debut as the Cowboys quarterback begins this drive from the 26. And Jones will carry to the 28 yard line tackle there by Thomas Davis gain of two second and eight. Yeah this is where Bill Parcells likes to you know get the lead slow the game down run the ball you know get some first downs those kinds of things but when you do that again you have to get first down so. You know, whether he'll come back and run again on second down, I'm not sure because he's at second and eight. Now, if this was second and five, I know he'd run on this down. Jones has carried 19 times for 86 yards. So a little over four yards a carry. You got Jason Witten 
being pointed at. False start. Offense. Number 82. Five yard penalty. Second down. A little flinch there. Cowboys have now been penalized nine times for 86 yards. You know, and part of that, and not make an excuse for the, the Cowboys that jump, but part of that is when you have a, a different quarterback in there, he has a little different rhythm in his cadence. You know, and you get used to one guy and you you anticipate the cadence, you anticipate the count, and then you get a new guy in there and you're anticipating the old guy's count. Second and 13. And Owens was the intended receiver. He was blanketed by Gamble, setting up a third down and 13 now. Yeah, and if they're going to pass now, they ought to go back to the middle because that's what they're just taking away those outside receivers on the outside. So they have to get them in the inside and in the middle like they did before, or or go to Whitten in the middle. Because the Panther defense has really done a good job of taking away Terrell Owens when he's been outside like this and Terry Glenn. When he's been outside like that up on top. Four receivers set. Barber flanks Romo in the backfield. And again, you got a whistle before the snap. It's Flozell Adams and Mike Rucker this time matched up. Neutral zone infraction. Defense, number 93. Five yard penalty, third down. So that's Rucker. I tell you, we haven't heard a lot of, of Mike Rucker tonight, and and Mike Rucker is a good player, but you know Flozell Adams. I mean, he's kind of been up and down, and people have been on him, but Flozell has done a, a, a good job tonight blocking out there at left tackle because most of the help has gone to the other side, Mark Colombo on Julius Peppers, and he's kind of been out here all alone uh, with Mike Rucker, and he's done a good job. Third and eight now from the 28. They blitz that line again does a good job and the catch is made by Owens who gets free at midfield before he steps out of bounds at the 44 yard line. Chris Gamble had him and lost him. Well that's that's the thing they kind of they kind of hit him they have they have him stacked right here see he's the front guy and the, and they have the two receivers there so so he starts on a stack he's a front guy like an I formation starts like he's going inside. Gamble falls down and then he goes back outside to the corner. I was saying they were having a tough time getting the outside receivers open when they kept him outside, but that was a good way to get him open. 28 yard gain. Owens in his first game as a Cowboy over 100 yards tonight. And then Jones gets knocked back by Chris Draft for a loss. Owens has now caught nine passes. And the two-point conversion, which doesn't count in those numbers, and they've thrown to him 16 times. Well, that's pretty good, and that's that's what he's been saying all the time. He says, you know, he said, I, you know, when I make my case, and I'm not sure exactly who I should make it to, but I just want to be a playmaker. I just want to get the ball in my hands, and if that's complaining, if that's being a bad guy, okay, so be it. But that's what I want. In effect, they've thrown to him on about 45 percent. Of their pass plays tonight. Second and 13. Jones now to the 44 yard line. I think he's working a lot more than he's used to be working because, as you said, he's been a big part of their offense. And on that last play, they brought him in darn near to a tight end position. He was a blocker. Watch this. They bring him in and he's going to block Julius Peppers right there. In fact, he had to hold him too, didn't he? Third and ten. Less than six and a half now in regulation. From the 44-yard line. Four-man rush. Romo finally gets taken down. Mike Rucker, the first guy to get there, number 93. And then he gets finished off at midfield. Right, I was just saying what a good job Flozell Adams was doing, and Mike Rucker just ran right by him. This is just a speed rush. You're just going to see him here. Boom! He just goes right by Flozell. And, you know, he tries to just push him to the outside. He has his feet in terrible position, and he just beat him with quickness. Adams looking inside at first. Rucker around the 
around the edge for the sack. McBriar in the punt. Smith to run it back. He fielded Smith did the last time he was back there. A punt at the two yard line. He's going to return anything. Yep. And he's a guy who can. And this is a line drive that he can't handle at the six yard line. The ball is loose again. And it is all the Panthers can do to maintain possession as Richard Marshall, who lost a fumble earlier, is there this time to save the day, at least for the moment, because that could have written a finish to this one. Well, you talk about shooting yourself in the foot. You know, the, the, the Panthers have really shot themselves in the foot in, the, in special teams. In this area, I mean, these kinds of things. Remember the Hoover fumble, this play, the other play that you were talking about, the other fumble, and it, it's... It's, it's not offense as much as the special team has been getting them. So Carolina backed up to its own two yard line. There's five and a half to go. DeLorme out of the end zone to throw. To the outside to Foster. He'll get three. Taken down at the five. Tackled by Anthony Henry. DeLome is no stranger to late comebacks. Nine fourth quarter touchdown passes to take his team from trailing to leading since the 2003 season. Best in the league. 14 game winning drives in the fourth quarter or overtime. Most in the league since the 2003 campaign. They just haven't been able to put any drives together in this second half. And as John Fox told us the other day, we haven't put a complete game together. And they haven't tonight either. Second down and six. Malone under pressure. Throws into traffic and it is picked off by Roy Williams. Double coverage along the far sideline and Roy Williams was there on a pass intended for Keyshawn Johnson. Right, and that's that cover two, you know, where the corner comes up on the wide receiver, the safety comes over, Roy Williams being the safety or the deep guy on that cover two. Hey, Jake DeLome really didn't throw that one. He had to get rid of the ball because he had a, a, a pretty good pass rush on him. And you look, see, he goes play action pass here, and, and now he has to kind of step sideways to throw that. Didn't get a lot on it. There's the double coverage. You see the short guy, and you see the deep guy, Roy Williams, catching the ball and staying inbounds. Just staying inbounds. Just. But the Cowboys have been in that cover two all night on first and second down. All to 32. Too late for any challenge. They wouldn't have won it anyway. Here's a flag. And a face mask. You know, Bill Parcells is kind of Carolina. a different guy tonight than the Cowboys are a different team tonight than they were on Monday night. Yep. And they're a lot more aggressive. They're going after Personal things. Personal Face mask. Defense. Number 90, half the distance to the goal, first down. Well, Bill doesn't have a party hat on tonight, but last week, as we said, I thought he was a cross between disconsolate and exasperated. Tonight, better. Yeah, and, and frustrated and not upset where that comes in there. I think that, you know, those 10 phone calls he got and the letters <laughs> and stuff, I think that was about that. You know, you know, we like to see you get mad. We like to see you get frustrated. We like to see you get on guys. Jim Burke comes down here to be in the sideline to remind them. Hey, yell at these guys the way you used to yell at me. Right now, the frustration is on the other side, and the Panthers are in a big hole right now because the Cowboys can chew some of the clock here, and Carolina has only one timeout plus the two-minute warning. And there's Jones. So Carolina really up against it now. They had to take an earlier timeout. They lost another timeout because of an unsuccessful challenge. And that's the dilemma that Fox is facing right now. The other dilemma he's facing is his, his defense is tired and they're worn down. And I think, you know, after these first downs, after, you know, the Cowboys having the ball so many plays, that defense has been out on the field a long time. And they're starting to wear and tear is starting to show on them. And the Cowboys right now have the upper hand. Second down and 10. Romo, like a 10-year veteran, just milks the play clock right down to the end with the game clock running, and the ball is at the 13-yard line. You know, Romo reminds me of Jimmy Johnson years ago, used to have a saying about, you know, you talk about it, and the guy's it, and he said, yeah, the guy that's it is the guy that walks in a room and sinks the eight ball. 
you know, and you kind of kind of feel that Tony Romo may be that guy that walks in room 68, ball takes the money and walks out. He has that kind of personality. Look at this in this quarter, 105 yards the Cowboys to four for Carolina. That's why the defense looks tired. Third down and eight. At worst, a chip shot field goal attempt. At best, a first down and maybe a touchdown to come. See, It'll be a first down at the three yard line. Marion Barber. Yeah, excuse me, Al, but that's what a tired defense looks like. I mean, that's that that you know you get that type of run and you get missed tackles and you know those things happen to a tired defense and that's what the Carolina Panthers are right now and the Cowboys can have their way with them. <laughs> Look how tired they are. Watch here the I formation Oliver Hoyt the fullback. Now that's a lead block. I mean you just get in there and part of it is the linebacker helping him. He just jumped to the outside. But as I said this this defense is a worn down defense. First and goal from the three. Here's Farber. And he gets into the end zone. Which is not the worst thing that can happen to Carolina at this point because they were up against it. With one timeout and the two minute warning and at worst a Vanderjat field goal, it was going to be a two possession game anyway. So at least they get the ball back. But of course, in, in this scenario now, they have to score two touchdowns. Yeah, this is when it's fun for the Cowboys. It's fun to be an offensive lineman. You just you just know you have them. They're on your heels. And you're going to go get them. Vanderjat for the extra point, and that's 28 unanswered points by the Dallas Cowboys. Watch his touchdown run, and you just see this this whole side here just goes down. I mean, they just they just take them all, and they just they just push the whole thing darn near right into the end zone. Look at this. They're all standing up, getting pushed back. That's. That's when you know you have dominance. John, it's the it's the end of October. The standings right now, five and two are the Giants. Eagles lose today. Dallas three and three on the verge of going to four and three. In the South right now, Atlanta and New Orleans each five and two. Carolina in jeopardy now falling to four and four. You you can't say it's a season saver at the end of October. But the Dallas Cowboys were right on the cusp. Of losing this season if Romo had played poorly tonight if they had lost the game tonight two more road games Giants playing that well this may be a season saver I totally agree with that I mean that was a tough decision that Bill Parcells made to you know take his quarterback out go to the Tommy Romo and know that when you did that you had to stay with it, it was kind of OK I'm going to put it in his hands and we're going to either do it or not do it with him. and if it didn't work I agree with you Al it would have been a long year. Up to the 24 yard line Marshall shaken as he goes down to the 24 yard line and for Bill Parcells now at the end of his fourth season. Well there he is. I mean there is the yeah. <laughs> sort of the old Parcells a little bit of the of the old Bill. Well he's having fun. I mean winning is fun. Losing is tough. I mean losing is terrible. There's nothing worse than losing and probably there's nothing better than winning and. I know exactly how he feels. I've been on both ends of that. And his owner Jerry Jones, and I know how he feels. And, and you saw that graphic. I mean, Parcells has not had a, a win of this type. <laughs> Look at the two of them. Since 86 as the coach of the Giants trailing by 14 in the first quarter. I think Parcells was just saying, there's my guy that can sink the eight ball. Michael Gaines. I mean, that's life in the NFL, John. I mean, it's it's the oldest of cliches. One week you're in the outhouse, and the next week you're in the penthouse. You know, and as long as you're in the game, as long as you're here and you're coaching and you you're, you're in this game and you know it, when you lose a game, you lose your confidence, and you don't know if you're ever going to win another one. They're not quite in the penthouse, but at least the elevator's going up. Two minutes to go. Cowboys by 14. Dallas Cowboy Roy Williams covers more ground than just about anyone in the NFL. I'll be right there. But even he can't be there for every child that needs his help. Hey, your 
You're good with kids, aren't you? What about me? Maybe you can give them a hand. Help the NFL and United Way strengthen your community. Volunteer at unitedway.org. This it's coming. NFL television history. I believe that they're the real deal. The best teams. Caught. Touchdown. The biggest stars. An NFC showdown. The undefeated Bears. The NFC East leading Giants. Go ahead and flex. Only on Sunday Night Football. And you couldn't have a better game to flex into than that. The Bears are undefeated at the moment. The Giants are red hot at the moment, and they meet at the Meadowlands. And then next week, Indianapolis and New England, despite playing in separate divisions, they seem to meet every year. We've done a number of these games over the past few seasons. You've got Brady, you've got the undefeated Colts and Manning. So you got Colts, Pats, Bears, Giants on your next two Sunday nights. Right, and you know, when you talk about the best quarterbacks in football, it's either Brady or Manning, and next Sunday night we have both of them. Meanwhile, you had Ellis coming in, creating the fumble, and Dallas recovers to write the ultimate finish to this one as John Fox can only shake his head, and Carolina will go into that off week now with a record of four and four. Yeah, we talked about Dallas, how you know how big a thing this is in a turnaround, and then then you look here's here's Greg Ellis he's going to be the, the end man in the line of scrimmage he's a either a strong side linebacker or when they go to pass rush and he becomes a left defensive end but you look at the Panthers you know they lose they lose two in a row now and they have a bye week to think about it right and they don't play a game for 15 days their next game is uh, two weeks from tomorrow against Tampa so it's first and ten now Ratliff recovered the fumble. We're going to look at it upstairs. The previous play. Well, this is one that almost always gets reviewed. We're inside two minutes, so there's no challenge here. This has to be stopped by the replay official upstairs. And Scott Green will take a look under the hood. And you have, as you always do here, is the arm coming forward? Do you have the empty hand and all of the rest? Take a look. Well, you got. The ball come the hand was coming forward at what point is the hand empty. I don't know Greg Ellis went in and grabbed his arm. I mean that. And you know again going back to old time football and the way you wish you would that's fumble. Now I know what happened you know the Raiders <laughs> in New England and the you know the tuck rule and all that stuff that we have to go through now because of that. But you know, I don't care what you could that's fumble. Now they may say open hand tuck you know hand going you know and all those things. Listen Ellis may have hit the ball. Well, he puts his hand right on. Well, if he didn't hit the ball the wrist, he put yeah. his hand right on his hand. Yeah. yeah. This is this is one of those rules. I mean and the competition committee wrestles with this every year. And they're trying to get it right and they're trying to make it less complicated. And a lot of people have had a lot of input in this and of course it all goes back to. I mean, the most dramatic of them all, of course, was the Oakland New England game. You see Jake DeLome on that with his tongue out. You wonder why they don't bite their tongue off sometimes. Mm. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands. And that'll write a finish to this one. And Bill Parcells and the gang can make a, uh, a happy westbound trip. And head back to the Metroplex, and then it's on to Washington next week. 29 more plays run by the Cowboys tonight. Of course, as John said, Carolina shooting itself in the foot. Three turnovers in the fourth quarter alone. Bart. So for the Romo era, we don't want to make it the Romo era just yet, but. Uh, for the Dallas Cowboys, they, I'm only, they, only, feel, they only feel about 100 times better than they did this six nights ago. Right, and he had to come in here and have this kind of game. And, and the, you know, you don't feel that this is one, a lucky one, and he's not going to have it. I mean, he has too much talent. I didn't know that he had that quicker release and could read as well as he did and do the things that he does professionally. He's pretty good. He really is. 
<laughs> well, he had a little he, he had a, a little love tap for Owens before. There's a little smooch for Keith Davis. That's the second coach kiss we've had this year. Remember but, Bill Cower. But that but that was instigated by remember it was Joey Porter who did the kissing. Bill Bill I think received the kiss as I recall. Did he? I I'm, I thought I'm trying to remember. Maybe I, you're right. I think Porter Porter did the kissing. We're gonna have to look at that one again. Oh yeah, no, we wouldn't go, we're going back in the archives. We got Fred Gadelli and Drew Essick out there. They're coming through the uh, the archives as Marion Barber is gonna take this one into the end zone. Well, you see that, and he stayed in bounds, and 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 more backs ought to learn that from Marion Barber right there. He could have gone out of bounds. It would have been easy. Could have been knocked out of bounds, but he just dipped that inside shoulder and took it into the end zone. I like that. I mean, I know they have the game won, yeah. but you still have to finish off run. And you know, the opposite of this is a guy getting up close to the sideline and just going out of bounds. There's no way that Marion Barber is going to go out of bounds here. Just dip that shoulder, stay in bounds, and get the ball in the end zone. That's good running. Now they're going to review this to see if he got into the end zone. Well, it's what you have to do. I mean, the crowd is saying, what are you doing this for? This game was over anyway. And you all know what I mean, the rest of you. So whether it's 34-14 or 28-14, it was, it was over. And remember, it's all right for the ball to be out of bounds as long as his body isn't the ball but there was nothing out of bounds no. no he broke the plane and everything just to look if he's down or not he's down running low oh so it's where the now nah, it's a touchdown yeah again it's it's where where the ball is when his knee touches his knee touches there mm -hmm. now where's the ball well, maybe it's, it, it may not be over the goal line, but well, I think it's close. All the ball yeah. has to do is break the plane of the goal line. Well, it's like a court of law at this point. We all know that common sense should prevail. Move it along. Send the teams home. Get to the postgame show. But the court docket says that's well, the guys that become officials don't think that way. Here we go. Let's go back. Yeah, I, I knew it. Yeah, we see it was Porter. And then Bill did a little whisper job. Yeah, back. No, 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 you're right. I had my I had the kisser and the kissy <laughs> wrong. <laughs> I think Bill gave him a double dip there, didn't he? After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. <laughs> I think Bill was wondering what in the world he was doing at first, and then figured, ah, he might as well just finish it uh, off. <laughs> how did I get myself in this predicament? <laughs> But I'll tell you, oh, you know, I've always man. said winning is a great deodorant, and you can you can just see how it, you know, everything smells pretty good right now in that cowboy oh, sideline. Yeah. Bandage after for the point after. Of course, Bill Parcells' press conference. Press conferences have become great theater. Well, the one thing that, that he put to bed, I think, is the is the quarterback thing. I mean, should it be Bledsoe yeah. or should it be Romo? I think. I think that one is over. This one here, Terrell Owens is always going to be Terrell Owens. Bill Parcells is always going to be Bill Parcells. Speaking of those press conferences, beginning with the end of the game last week, dot, dot, dot. I'm ashamed to put a team out there plays like that. I mean, really. All the decisions you make in this business are pretty risky. I'm not worried about the playoffs. People just quit talking about the playoffs. I'm trying to get above 500. I know the business. I've been in it a long time. They can get the hearses out there if they want to, but I'm not riding in them yet. That was the key. That was like the Groucho Marx word. He used the hearse last week. He told us last night when we asked him about an in-game change, he said, unless Romo's in the hearse, he's in. Well, don't put the Cowboys in the hearse. They might have been there with a loss tonight. But I think Bill just had another kiss there, didn't he? We need to review that. Well, that's what you get on the winning sideline. You get kisses today. It's a kissing fool. Richard Marshall. Up to the 26-yard line. 
Stopped by Kevin Burnett. It's, it's the it's the love boat over on the Cowboy sideline tonight. And I think you know the the probably Tony Romo playing so well has a you know big part of that. And then you know when your quarterback plays well, then your offense plays well, and then when your offense plays well, your defense is fresh, and the whole thing kind of goes together. I think you're right. I think we had another bus right there. Right, and then you get a totally different guy. I mean, isn't Bill Parcells a totally different guy tonight on the sideline than he was last week? Mm. Nick Goins. Cowboys, meanwhile, have, have just established a new franchise record for most points in a fourth quarter, 25. Yeah, who would have guessed that? I mean, I'm amazing. Coming into this with the, you know, the, the, the quarterback, the, the bad loss, the coach being upset, and the, and the whole thing. Sometimes you wonder, are they ever going to win another game? And the other thing, too, John, I mean, you, you think back, it's 14 to nothing Carolina. They're on the verge of a blowout. You got a quarterback, you're not going to make a change. And so it's even sweeter. With 35 unanswered points, and and you're the team blowing the other team out. You're right, and then and then doing it on the road too. I mean, they, you know, you come on the road, and you know, you know, it's going to be tough. It's a hostile environment, and all those types of things, and then you get down 14 to nothing. Panther injured right now. Check it out here at Carolina's mistakes tonight. There was Keyshawn Johnson. That might have been a touchdown. Certainly would have been a, a first down. Then you had the, the Hoover fumble here. That was big because the Cowboys scored in the next play. A lot of dropped passes tonight. And then DeLong has that one picked off as Roy Williams stayed in bounds. And it's the guard Evan Mathis who needed some attention. But they get him back to the sideline. Serious post game report coming up and Andrew will be down in the field and she'll talk to number 81 Mr. Owens highlights and interviews after the game third down and five with the ball at the 31 yard line alone to Smith and for Steve Smith tonight that's six catches for 54 yards. I've always thought in this situation it's silly to run plays. I mean, you're down 35 to 14. What are you going to do? You have a play that scores 20 points. It's fourth and one, and this is Nick Goings going out of bounds. Going to move the chains with 35 seconds to play. I think there's sometimes you just say, "Okay, it's yeah. over." You know, I mean, let's just run it out, and we'll go home. We'll take our bye week. We'll put it back together and come out and play again. This is one of those times. Because I think if you ever got a player hurt doing this, oh yeah, yeah, you'd never forgive yourself. Yeah. And it's happened too. Forty-yard line, first and ten. Gains to the forty-nine-yard line. Funny how Mr. Owens, Terrell Owens, is kind of—he's kind of moved into the. The background a little bit here. I mean, it was all T.O. all the time, and now he's like a secondary figure. <laughs> 